Since Miguel Cabrera and Victor Martinez have joined the Detroit Tigers, they have hurt the athletics. Whether it's in the regular season or the playoffs, they have done their damage on the green and gold. Last night it was no different as two of the most feared back-to-back -back hitters in the league helped the Tigers take game one of this three-game series. Tonight it's Jesse Hahn's turn to tame the Tigers. Since joining the rotation, Jesse has been impressive, but has been a victim of lack of run support. It's Saturday Night Baseball from the Coliseum A's. Tigers, next. Saturday Night Baseball from the Coliseum. Great giveaway tonight. It's the Bob Melvin Bobblehead. If you got one, you are lucky and you are also happy. It's good looking. We like it. <laughs> Jesse Hahn tonight's going to pitch for the A's. It's the A's and the Tigers coming up on NBC Sports California, powered by Xfinity. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. No secret with the Detroit Tigers. They always seem to have a very powerful lineup, right. and it all starts with the two big guys in the middle, Miguel Cabrera, Victor Martinez, and you, you see it almost every time you play them. You just have to be careful with these two guys because their scoring opportunities always seem to revolve around those two. And Kuyper, we talked about protection last night. This is probably the best protection for Miguel Cabrera. He's a great hitter, but he has Victor Martinez behind him. But Cabrera, you make a mistake. Your point last night about that belt buckle never opens up on anything great opposite field double there but what Victor Martinez does behind him is exceptional How about this pitch off the plate they were shifting him to the right side they pitch him away he goes to left field and then what does he do also goes down the left field line for a double so two of the best hitters in baseball back to back in this Tigers lineup very tough to deal with now Jesse Hahn has pitched very well this year and hey listen with the Sean Manaya situation right. where Manaya probably going to be coming back fairly soon Hahn is pitching to try to stay in this rotation it's 3 0 against the Tigers. Who better to start this game tonight than Jesse Hahn? He has had exceptional success against the Tigers. Low ERA, 3 0. Everything he does is great against the Tigers, but he's also doing it against the rest of the league. Good upstairs fastball, high velocity, good sinker down and away. Good change up. He's got everything working for him. He just wants to continue against the Tigers. All right, and the Tigers will send the veteran right hander Jordan Zimmerman to the mound. Zimmerman is looking for his fourth win of the year. So the A's hoping that maybe the Bob Melvin bobblehead will give him a little good luck tonight as they need to win to try to even up this series at a game apiece. We'll have lineups and first pitch from the Coliseum right after this.
NBC Sports California is brought to you by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. By Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Jack in the Box. Come try the new guacamole and bacon chicken sandwich only at Jack in the Box. So it's the A's and the Tigers, game two of this three-game series. As we're just moments away from first pitch, it'll be thrown by that man, Jesse Hahn, number 32. A's wearing the green tops tonight. It is a beautiful night for a ball game here in Oakland. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The boardwalk is open. Visit beachboardwalk.com for park hour. 63 degrees with a light breeze of 14 miles per hour. So still not summertime quite yet. Getting there though. But it's getting there. Let's look at a lineup tonight for the Detroit Tigers. It's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Romine will again play second base and lead things off. Castellanos plays third base and bat second. Then the big fellas in the middle. We talked about them in the open. Cabrera and Martinez, both hot hitters, followed by Upton, Avia, Collins, Aducey, and Iglesias. Uh, very well documented that we talked about Jesse Hahn, his success against the uh, Detroit Tigers. And you go back to 2015, the Tigers. he pitched a very, very good game, his first ever complete game shutout. Jesse Hahn, good sinker, ground ball pitcher, fastball up in his own strikeout pitcher. He's got it all working for him, and he'd like to continue that success against this ball club. Defensively, the A's will have Decker and left Davis and center Joyce and right. Healy, Rosales, Lauer, and Alonzo third to first. Stephen Vogt is your catcher. Chris Davis will be the designated hitter in tonight's game. So we're set for baseball as Andrew Romine steps in. The first pitch of the game is a strike on the outside corner. It was a 7-2 Tigers win last night. And just one of those ball games where the A's, there just wasn't a whole lot to cheer about for the A's. Well, Mr. Fulmer was pretty good. Yeah. It's amazing how a good pitching performance can really shut down a home team and a home crowd. Slice foul one and two to Romine. Romine playing in place of Ian Kinsler again. Kinsler out with the little hamstring and doesn't sound like we'll see him in this series. Right? Now he said a couple of days and for some reason it seemed like he was in the original lineup and scratch but he said never was and uh, hamstring is still a couple of days away from being able to be in there very good player great second baseman hitter lead off Gabe Morales is calling balls and strikes tonight Gary Cedarstrom is your crew chief and he is at second base slice foul again to keep the count two and two. So Jesse Hahn looking to even his record at two wins and two losses. Good ERA at 2.53. Took the loss in his last start at Houston. It was on Sunday. Lowry shuffles to his right a couple of steps and throws out Romine. So out number one. Well, tonight. Any 95 mile per hour fastball is our fast pitch brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest Wi Fi at home and on the go. That's good to, to see Jesse Hahn get a ground ball sinker to get his first ground ball out of the game, especially the leadoff hitter. Oh, my last night, a little different. Remember, bases loaded the first inning last night for the Tigers. Great double play turn by the A's, though. A holy Toledo double play, but just didn't hear it. Well, you know what? You may think it was. I may think it was. But whoever makes that decision did not think it was. Chet Farrell said yes. He actually said it on Adam Rosales' dive in the first inning. So somebody literally just could not quite pull the trigger. It froze. Could not push that button. Push the button. <laughs> Good pitch there from Hahn. One and one the count. Yeah, there were some holy Toledo moments last night, but it was. Most of them were during the 18. <laughs> I would have been hitting that button four or five <laughs> times during the 18. <laughs> one and one to Castellanos. That start by Jesse Hahn in Houston. He, he did pitch poorly. It's not real sharp, but still six innings, eight hits, four runs, three earned runs. It's unfortunate for the A's, the guy on the other side named Dallas Keiko mm -hmm. was pitching, and he ended up finishing the month of April 5 and 0. Oh. 
pitcher of the month, deservedly. Yeah, that's a great pitch there. That little two seam fastball coming back the outside part of the plate. So if you can get a ground ball on the two seamer, that's great. How about this two? Watch this ball come back. Starts outside, it comes right back to the outside part of the plate. And you're going to see a lot of right handed hitters do exactly what Castellanos did. Just froze, thinking it's going to be outside. Tough to pick up the spin where it's coming back as a sinker to the outside part of the plate. More action for Lowry. He scoops it up, throws to first two away. So a couple of ground ball outs to start the ball game for Jesse Hahn. Number 24, Miguel Cabrera. And that'll bring up Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera last night, a couple of hits. Two for five. Single and a double. Overall, 275 the average for Cabrera. He did spend a little time on the disabled list, had a little groin injury. Just came back on Tuesday. So Perfect timing, huh? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's not the same kind of player as Mike Trout. Both have won multiple MVPs, but just from an announcer perspective, he he, he is fun to watch oh, because yeah. he's so good. And they're different players. Trout's more just exciting the way he runs around. Cabrera just is a pure hitter. As you said last night, it, it's really hard to find anybody in baseball that's just a better pure hitter. He's questioning this call. This is a very good pitch thrown by Jesse Hahn, similar to what he threw to Castellanos. But Kai, if you said one important word, fun. He has fun playing the game. I mean, he is great at what he does. But he's smiling just like he tipped his hat or smiled at Triggs last night when he struck him out. And they have fun with the fans. But, I mean, that's the way you play the game. He knows he's great. Although he says there are better hitters than him, I don't think so. Well, you play 162 games. Yeah, I do think it's gonna have a little fun. Yeah, and, and to be that good, I mean, that's have that guy 41 behind him. I mean, it's it's optimum for him. And I I think you talked about the length of contract for Cabrera, a little bit different for Victor Martinez, but it's gonna be a huge change for Miguel Cabrera when Victor Martinez finally is not behind him in the lineup, and Miggy might continue to give money from his contract to say yeah. keep him. And Victor's got one more year left on his contract, so he'll be with the Tigers next year as well. But yeah, after that, two simmer down and in. And he missed, and it's a walk. See, that's one thing right there that he's not afraid to do. You know, drive in runs. But he'll say, Give me a walk, I'll take it, and let Victor do it. Victor Martinez. It's amazing. You mentioned Mike Trout. It seems that you have the best hitters hit third. The managers want to see their best hitter in the lineup or at least hitting in the first inning. But you can see how things change. You can go one, two, bam, bam, just like Graveman did in Anaheim. You get Trout, close pitch, call the ball, ends up resulting in two runs. But there's something about the third place hitter. If he's the best, I mean, he's going to generate probably a more the liberal strike zone, maybe. I mean, sure. I, I don't want to say that so bad, but it does happen. It's a shot to the right field for a base hit. So Victor Martinez three hits last night, and he has a hit in his Heading first in inning tonight. Jesse Upton. Well, first pitch hitting, and Jesse Hahn, a bit of an off-speed pitch, left it up, and Victor was not going to wait around. So two quick outs, ground balls to second, and a base or a walk, and then a base hit. And now you have first and second, and trying to get Justin up. To you know, I, I I agree with you. I think you know the great hitters they probably get a few more calls from the umpires. I don't know that the umpires are necessarily doing it on purpose. Right. It just it, it just happens that way. But that means you have superstars on your team. You don't think Ricky Henderson got the oh. got got calls in his favor? I mean, his strike zone is about yeah. 12 inches anyway. Shot because he was a superstar player and exactly. he deserved it. Exactly. I mean, I had times when I caught in Oakland, 
and I saw the strike zone different sure. then with the pitchers. When I went back to Cleveland, I had an umpire actually tell me, he said, you're not in Oakland anymore. And you had <laughs> Hall of Fame pitchers. Yeah, but I mean, that that's that's one of the differences. Yeah. But right now, Jesse breathes the first two batters, and now it's 2-0 and oh to Upton, and this is the critical batter. Alex Avila, who's behind him, catcher's doing a good job. 2 and 0 oh to Justin Upton. Upton was one for four with a walk last night. He scored a run. Nice play by a fan right behind the Tigers dugout. Looks like a Tigers fan. That's right behind home plate. Back just a bit. Pitch number 24 coming up. And here it is. Just missed outside, and now it's three and one. Trying to shave that outside corner. That may be throwing a little bit too hard to get the sink for it to come back over the corner. Now, if you're a ground ball pitcher, it's a great time to throw a sinker because hitter's going to be sitting on a four seam fastball. Three one delivery. Hit hard but foul. Is that Omar Vizquel over there? Yes, it is at first base. Heads up, Omar. He, I, I thought he'd just make the play. See, Alex Avila wore 13 when he's there. Yeah. But uh, Omar said, I got 13, Alex. I may be going to Hall of Fame. <laughs> Seattle to Cleveland, and there are the Seagulls. They must be going for some sunflower seeds because Something's going on. they forgot this is a night game. Seagulls go back over across the bay. That one oh, just wow. missed on a close pitch. Well, same as last night. Base was loaded. Only one out last night. This tonight, two outs, but two seamer coming back. Did it come enough? Evidently Alex not. Avila. Stephen Bolt was holding it, thinking it could have been a call to strike. It was to Castellanos. Expo brought to you by Cash yeah. Creek Casino Resort. Fifteen pitches to the last three batters: Cabrera, Martinez, and Upton. And Martinez swung at the first pitch, three and two to both Cabrera and to Upton. So here is Alex Avila. A's are playing him to pull. Alex Avila has hit some big home runs to left field. You have to be careful with him with his offensive field power. He's hitting 391 with four home runs. This is his 19th game. So he's off to a very fine start. Avila now 30 years old. Seems like he's been around a long time. He did not have a good year, his one year in Chicago. In fact, he played in only 57 games. And a couple stints on the disabled list, so it's kind of a forgettable year for him in Chicago. But coming back to Detroit after the one year in Chi Town. Numbers for the Tigers, two out hitting. And they're in a good spot here with the count two and all. And that one's hit high and foul, may have hit a seagull. It's very strange, I gotta tell you folks, I know the bases are loaded and all, but as Ray said, Seagulls usually come right when the game ends. They are all over the place right now. Too much. They've been here since the actually right before the game, almost like they know it was a one o'clock game and realizing there are people in the seats. But they are flying all over the place, and this really did a little distracting. Uh huh. No question, because they are not all flying way above the stadium. No. They are flying pretty close to the ground. And I've been told that the sunflower seeds, not the actual sunflower meat, but mm -hmm. the seeds they like. Mm -hmm. And of course, the players during the batting practice will dispose of them. But it's just very strange though that they're here at this point while the game's going on. Exactly. You just don't see it very That's a French fry, which is probably what's that doing on the that's field? It's just like striking <laughs> gold right there. French but fry. a French fry on the field? Come on. Does Clay Wood know that? <laughs> see, well, I mean they're just hanging out, that's man. Right. I mean that there's a ground ball to center field, hits a seagull. I mean, you, you have to be concerned. 
I mean, you have to really concentrate right now if you're an outfielder or an infield. Two and two, the count to Avila. Cabrera, Martinez, Upton are your base runners. And that one almost hit Avila, so now it's a full count. So things have, well, they've kind of maxed out right here with the bases loaded, two out. Well, it's a great hitting opportunity. Jesse Hines knows he has to throw a strike over through this fastball, and like you said, almost hit Avila, which don't want that to happen. Good pick by Stephen Bolt. Cabrera at third base can touch and shake hands with Stephen Bolt. Nobody near him. 3-2 pitch, roll foul. Steven Boat called fastball, but a true samer thrown by Jesse Hahn that took a little bit off. That's why Avila was out in front on the 3-2 fastball. So pitch number 33 coming up in this inning and Han got the first two hitters out. Another foul ball. So he has to throw strikes and he has the last two pitches. And he's going to throw fastballs. That's I mean Jesse's got a good curve and change up but it's just a matter of how hard the velocity for his fastball when he does throw a three and two again. Ten pitches the first two batters. Hmm. He's sitting on number 34 now coming up. On the bat on the ground to Alonzo. Han gets over there and Jesse Han. It took a lot of work, but he gets out of it as the Tigers. Leave the bases loaded in the top of the first. Starting lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Rajay Davis, his bat's ready, and it has to be because he's going to bat lead off tonight. Then Lowry, Davis, Alonzo, Healy, Vogt, Joyce, Rosales, and Decker. Jordan Zimmerman, one start last April, late April, against the A's at Comerica Park. Of course, he's coming over, signing a huge contract with the Tigers for the National League. So, Jordan Zimmerman, your basic four pitches plus a two and four seam fastball that he throws, but Jordan Zimmerman, a healthy Zimmerman, could help this staff tremendously. Defensively, the Tigers have Upton, Collins, and Aduce in the outfield. Castellanos, Iglesias, Romine, Cabrera on the infield, and Alex Avila is the catcher. So, Rajay Davis steps in to lead things off for the A's in the bottom of the first. Going for his second thousand. That's right. 
That is 1,000 last night late. Someone said you only need 2,000 more. <laughs> How long has it taken him to get to 1,000? It's part of a three hit game last night. But it's good to see him swinging the bat well. Some pretty good fastballs that he was able to get on top and drive, especially pulling them. And he knows he can be the igniter in this club. Lowry and Davis to follow here in the first, facing Jordan Zimmerman, the 30 year old right hander. Zimmerman pitched very well for the Washington Nationals, became a free agent, and signed a five year deal with the Detroit Tigers. This is the second year of that five year deal. This former team is playing quite well this year. Boy, boy, aren't they ever. coming into Oakland? Month or so. Best record in baseball, the Washington Nationals, 20 and 9. You got a good lineup. Cool. And probably the only manager of baseball that wears wristbands. Yeah. Dusty Bay. Johnny B. One and two to Raj, 236 for the home run and seven RBIs. Lays off the breaking ball. It's good take. Rajay last night, 1,000th hit, coming in the ninth inning. It's against Green, and so Rajay, congratulations, number 1,000, ball goes in. It's authenticated. Miguel Cabrera gave it to him a handshake, and it's great to see after the game. Waits on that curveball, loops it foul. I like that. Pretty nice to get a first base, and you got Miguel Cabrera, sure. a future Hall of Famer. Say, nice goal, kid. They love the bobblehead. Can't say bobblehead without Bob. No, you can't. I didn't know that until <laughs> you started reading the promo, and then I put it, put two and two together. <laughs> Fouled straight back. High fastball. See the backdrop side. It's Cap. You got the Bo Mel bobblehead. That's today, and right next to it. Hey, gig. Hey, gig. It's Bob Mel. He said, "Man, that took a lot of time. He was signing autographs, signing the bobble, Bob Miller bobblehead." He said, "Man, I can't wait till tomorrow." But he's ready tonight. He's in a relaxation right now, although very prepared as always. Iglesias scoops, throws on the run. Got him. Nice play by Jose Iglesias. Bob Melvin saying, "Wait a minute, let's take a look." I mean, a close play and. You just always hope for a safe call because unfortunately a lot of times it's not definitive enough and Cabrera semi stretch. And that's a bang bang but it's probably going to I don't know it's tough to tough to call. Especially in the first inning remember Bob Melvin lost his challenge but it looks safe at that angle because the ball was not clearly cleanly in the glove. He's got two one clock is at zero he said no and they're not going to check it. Now batting. I looked at the clock right? and, Jed and Lowry. we showed Bob Melvin put his hand up yeah, which is the indication right. but it already started it was at 26 that's right because as soon as the play happens they start the clock well that's not it's right horrible. I agree because why you should st start it that's right when the manager decides he's going to check it and give him the full 30 so essentially Adam was, uh, Adam Roden had 20 seconds. Now watch the ball. It's not in the glove, foot on the bag. He's, See, safe. he's safe. He's safe. But if you have, now that's a good point. I'm glad you saw that because that's the timing thing. Because whoever's running the clock should not start the clock until they see the manager out on. That's right here, right there. Yeah. And when he did that, and we showed it, yeah. the clock said 26 seconds. So he has to go on the warning track. Let me have my guy look at it. And by that time, Adam Roden gets back to Mark Kotze. It's down to the time. And that's a great point, guy, because and the clock is being run here. Whoever starts it, but I've noticed that every time there's a play, as soon as the play stops or is in development, it starts, and there's no reason to. Well, that alone makes it not 30 seconds. Exactly. It makes it 25. And if the umpires are looking at that, then that's what they're going by. That's a bad rule. Well, and what they should do. The time, the, the amount of time is a bad. Rule. Exactly, and, and the fact that they had allowed New York to have as much time as they wanted. Remember when they, they they said initially that it's two minutes, but if they need more time, they could take it. Well, if they want to get it right, do it right here. 
Time now for the Nissan Keys of the game. Of course, Bob Melvin always says on Little League Day, when there's a bunch of kids play well, well, they just need to play well on two, Bob Melvin, Bob Melvin Day. That would be a great Davis. sign for the skipper to have that and for the A score runs early and let Jesse Hahn relax a little bit because we have seen too many pitchers having to pitch every batter like it's a, a shutout necessary. So, so Lowry's aboard. Well, one final thought too, right now, as we showed that replay, now it looked like Rajay was yeah. safe, but was it a guarantee? Yeah, he's going to be called safe. I don't think so. Right center, a Deucey's back, and in front of the warning track, he makes the catch. And I bring that up because Bob Bell was thinking, man, I don't want to lose my right. challenge in the bottom of the first inning. Right. Yonder, he did, he did so that's where time. that strategy comes in, and yeah. I don't like that either. I agree. And he lost his challenge early last night, had to go to the umpires in the eighth inning, and that turned out to be a timing issue as well, unfortunately. So, no, I, there's some things that need to be done. And I think going back a couple of years when they had the, the control thing, you know, with the outfielders, uh, it, does he have control as he's taking the ball out of the glove and they change that midstream? Well, they yep. can do that too with the, with the timing on that because 30 seconds in a reality, much less. And, hmm. and I guess, and I would assume, the person handling the clock is hired by MLB. Sure. But that's something people to look at is the clock because I've noticed it and why is it running when there's no issues but to your point that by the time develops it develops then it should wait at that point. Alonzo fouls it back. So one and one the count to yonder Alonzo 305 for Alonzo six home runs 19 RBIs. Last 15 games, he's hit 348. In a hard 348. It's been hard. Lonzo has five doubles. He's got an on base percentage of 387 and a slugging percentage of 585. Those are terrific numbers. Now the check swing, very strong. No call on the appeal by the third base umpire. Last night's home plate umpire, Tom Woodring. Many people would say, well, Yonder Alonso is going to be a free agent. The thing about Yonder, he has improved going back even to last year and the offseason coming into this year. What he was going to be trying to do, and it's proven that it's worked. Skies this one towards shallow center. That's Heather Collins who grabs it, side retired. So the A's get a walk, nothing left. Try to get Bob Melvin another win as the athletics manager tonight. No score.
California All-Star Teacher Program is here recognizing teachers that make a difference. Visit NBCSportsCalifornia.com and vote. The winner receives $20,000 for his or her school. Top of the second inning from the Coliseum on a Saturday night. Jesse Hahn, 34 pitches in that first inning, and he got out of the jam. Tigers left the bases loaded, and now he'll face the bottom three in the lineup Collins, Naduce, and Iglesias. In the air, Decker backs up. Now a step or two in. He's got it, and that's the first out. And for the first time tonight, let's check now in with Angela. Right well, guys, tomorrow is Little League Day, but it is also Jim time. Aduzzi for the Sean Manaya LED watch giveaway presented by Black Bear Diner. I'm trying to sport it and show you as well. And you press his chin and it lights up. Speaking of Manaya, he is uh, close. He threw a bullpen session today and he's feeling good. Guys, back up to you. Well, that's good. At some point soon, Sean Manaya will be back. I guess maybe they got to decide, is he going to have a rehab yeah. star? He probably is going to need one by the time he's supposed to throw a side Two days ago, of course, they canceled. That was in Minneapolis. Today he did, and like Angela said, he he felt great afterwards. That's the Sean Manaya watch. Gosh, I can't wait for his face to light up. <laughs> Gets so excited. Bounces off Healy. He scrambles after it. His throw is going to be too late. The deuce he's going to be aboard. We'll see if that's a hit or an air. It was a hard hit ball, but it was also Dang right at him. Position. The shortstop. Number one. And it's an air. Well, it was hit hard. It was one that was difficult to handle. Fortunately, there he didn't make two errors on the play by throwing the ball away. Because when you throw quickly and he went down just trying and it was hit very hard. Top spin on it. He's going to be given an error. Last night, unfortunately, that opened up an inning for the, the Tigers. Trying to avoid that tonight. A lot of pitches. Then that would have been great. Got two pitches for Collins to get him out. And that ground ball would have been just three pitches to Aducey. Iglesias, 229 with a homer and nine RBIs. Last night the Tigers had seven runs and 11 hits. They had three doubles and two triples. You don't see two triples in a game very often. Placius had one of those triples and he scored a couple of runs. Ducey had a triple that cleared the bases. Tigers are fourth in the league in runs scored so far this year. They're eighth in home runs hit. Second in doubles. Last year the Tigers finished sixth in the American League in total runs scored. What a pitch to take. Oh, fastball down the middle. Iglesias just making him throw a strike, but boy, it was right there for the taking. And I mean, it's almost like that was a 3-0 fastball, but he he took it like that. But it was 1-0, now 1-1. One one. Do see runs? Ball's hit off a Han. Can't find it. He'll go after it and hold on to it. And Iglesias is going to have a hit. And that might have been a double play if he had let it go. It might have been like a throw to second base. Jesse got his glove base. on it. Of course, you never know, but you see the runner taking off and Lowry going over to second base. And I guess if you take the shot right over the top of the mound, Jesse did get a glove on it. Hmm. Unfortunately, not close enough to him to get at least one out. So two on, one out, and here's the leadoff man, Andrew Romine. So again, Han in some trouble. Oh. 
Rowline grounded out to second in the first inning. Swing and a miss. Tigers with a 15 and 13 record. They have won four out of their last five. Just a half game back in really what is a bunched up AL Central. Fastball inside, so Han went back in there. Brad Osmus says his team hanging around. Still waiting for J.D. Martinez, power hitting outfielder, to get back. Twins, Indians, White Sox, Tigers all bunched up in that Central Division. That one bounced foul, so the count one and two. Remember the Tigers won the division four consecutive seasons 2011, 12, 13, and 14. But Last two years they have missed the postseason. So they're trying to get back. We're kind of a staple in the postseason for a long, long time. Last year they finished eight games behind the Indians in three games out of the second wild card spot. So they were close, but not enough. They won 86 games last year. Well, unfortunately, that Mr. I on the sleeve of the Tigers, Mr. Illich, who passed away, their owner was never, never won a championship. He did with the Red Wings of hockey fame, but not the Tigers. 2 2 pitch, hit toward the gap, could be trouble. It is trouble. Ducey scores, Iglesias being waved around, he's going to score. And Romine is going to have a sliding two run triple, and the Tigers lead 2 0. Now batting number nine, Nicholas. Well, fastball down, and Romine didn't miss it, and unfortunately didn't hit it on the ground. And even more so, he hit it in the gap in right center where nobody could get to it, and the speed of the Glaces able to score from first. He could see the ball in front of him. And Good speed, like Collins. And when you see the ball like that, really, you don't even have to look at your third base coach. So another triple. In field in for Castellanos. Curve, line the left, and that's a base hit. So Romine trots in to score. So Han went with a first pitch curveball, but it was a hanger. So three nothing Detroit. It was a hanger and did not waste any time but boy, very Number disappointing to be a ground ball pitcher get a couple of ground balls actually. It turns out to be two guys on base and both have scored and now the guy drove them in so it could have been out of the inning with three batters. With a little bit of help maybe even himself fielded the ball up the middle. We've always talked about you give extra outs, you give extra opportunities, it's going to bite you. Yep. The unearned runs category, column. I mean, people talk about filling up your column with home runs and runs batted in, pitchers with wins, but boy, the unearned runs. You know where else I think it's dangerous, Ray, is if you give up outs at the bottom of the batting order. Absolutely. Yeah. Because then you got base runners with the top of the batting order coming up. And really, what Brad Oswalt did with the Glaces after the error allowed Adusi to reach base, but they hit and run on it. Yep. You do more of that probably at the part, bottom part of the batting order, setting the table. And we'll talk about the top two setting the table for this guy, Cabrera. But hey, the bottom line: if the bottom three guys get on, in this case, two guys, it opens it up. Cabrera had a walk in the first inning. Now it's 2 and 0. So 50 pitches now for Han. Well, so far, Nissan keys the game have not been good. Yeah, what were they again? I, I don't, I don't want to repeat remember it. Either. Well, I do, but I don't want to repeat it. <laughs> because it's not been a well played game for we the should, skipper. We should be able to renew the <laughs> Nissan keys to the game at any point. <laughs> yeah. At our discretion. Yep. 
Yeah, it's like the Holy Toledo site. Huh? That's right. We should be in charge of this. We should thing. have the button. Who has the button? Does Corrick have it? No. Nope. Ken's not involved. Nope. Ken okay. has nothing to do with it. I guess because he did the initial one last night, everybody thought he was the one in charge, but he's not. <laughs> I guess he was taking hey, a lot. Korak, hit the button. He takes a lot of heat. Yeah. We're not hitting the button, but. So you're making that announcement so everybody knows. Ken Cork is not in charge of no, the Holy Toledo bus. He does not want the responsibility. Let's hope that thing lights up because it's a beautiful sign, as we saw before the game last night. <laughs> now he's he's not in charge. It's important to clarify that. Be careful here. Yeah. Three and one to Cabrera, and he will pick a spot. Well, and he looks for pitches, and we saw in the first inning when he took a fastball, and it's like he's looking for something else from Jesse Hahn. And that one is drilled toward the gap in right center. Joyce over, and Joyce makes the catch. Fires it back in, and Castellanos hustles back. So Cabrera, he got a pitch that he was looking for, and he hit a shot. All right, let's check the Miguel Cabrera belt buckle. I bet it was pointing in right center field. Well, I bet you what, we would never be able to read it. Right, look at yeah. that point yeah, right where he yeah. the ball goes. And fortunately, it was right at him because last night he hit the ball in a gap. To hit it that hard, yeah, you get the chance to watch one of the best. Uh, might also congratulate one of the best in the history of the game, Willie Mays, 86th birthday yep. today. Happy so birthday, happy birthday to the Say Hey Kid. 86. 86. Still involved, and boy, you talk about somebody. It's an institution. Those. Players get to be around the great Willie Mays. Happy birthday, Willie. Well, I think what Willie means to the Giants is kind of like what, as time goes on and Ricky's with the organization yeah. more, I think yeah. that'll start to happen more with Ricky Henderson as well, being an ambassador for yeah. the team. Oh. One and one, the count to Victor Martinez. Martinez had a base hit in the first. Shoots one toward the shortstop, which is the shortstop spot, which was Healy who was shifted over, and Healy cannot come up with it. And that very well may be another error, and it is. So another hard hit ball, but right at the shortstop spot, and you see the shift on. And I guess if he was lucky, the ball would have hit his foot and carried him over to Adam Rosales, who was at second base, but it didn't. So Healy with a couple of errors in this inning. And Upton hits. Breaking ball for a strike. Upton walked in the first inning. He walked to load the bases. A couple of very long half innings for Jesse Hahn. In the second inning, if throwing 58 pitches, that's not good. At 34 in the first inning. And really, this inning could have been one, two, three. Back in the dugout. But meanwhile, three runs. 23 balls, 35 strikes for Han. Or two pitch tapped. Fair. As Healy grabs it right near the bag. Side retired, but kind of an ugly inning for the A's as they give up three runs. So bottom of the second coming up. Three nothing Tigers.
regular season visit to Oakland for a four game series May the 18th through May 21st the Thursday May 18th game includes a co branded San Jose Sharks A's beating to 10,000 fans presented by Cash Creek Casino Resort Friday May the 19th that game features post game fireworks set to the music of Bay Area hip hop presented by Lagadinas to secure your seats visit athletics.com slash tickets or you can call 877-493-BALL should be a great series with the Boston Red Sox in town. Always great to see the Red Sox nation at the Coliseum. They'll be here. Oh yes they will. <laughs> They'll be here. Healy vote and Joyce for the A's here in the bottom of the second. He's trailing three to nothing. Jordan Zimmerman. Ray you mentioned that start that Zimmerman made against the A's last year. He pitched pretty well. It was early in the year. And remember he started the season terrific. It yep. was lights out. I mean literally lights out. And he had a scoreless inning streak to start his season last year. And the A's in that April 25th start the A's were actually the first team to score a run against him. Right. Yep. He had gone 24 and a third consecutive innings without allowing a run to start mm -hmm. his season last year. And the A's couple of runs off him I believe in that game he ended up getting the win but I remember being there and that was a big deal yeah as he had pitched so so well starting his season but when it was all said and done he actually spent a couple months on the disable us he has a yeah. neck problem and so his first year in Detroit last year he ended up making 18 starts but healthy this year and that one is drilled down the left field line, and that baby's gone. So Healy gets the A's on the board, and it's three to one. And oh, hey, hey, we got it. Hey. I would say that qualifies. Well, it's been quite an inning for Ryan Healy. <laughs> But that's a great swing. He did it in Minnesota on Thursday against the Twins and does it tonight. So home run number five for Healy and here's Stephen Vogt. Vogt takes the first pitch for a strike. <laughs> Maybe that'll get the A's going a little bit. Vote at 2-11 with a homer and five RBIs. 0 for 4 last night with a couple of strikeouts. That one is hooked down the line. Foul. Well, a good swing by Ryan Healy and location of the fastball did not get it in where he wanted it. Healy turned on it, similar to what he did in Minneapolis against the Twins. Pitched out and in, dropped the head of the bat. And the ball was gone. Well, he makes contact as he just did. Stays fair. Long gone. Similar to that number 25 many years ago. They hit a whole bunch of home runs. High at 92 miles an hour. Uh, good swing by Ryan Healy. He is a powerful young man. And ball hit very hard. Look out in the stands. That's a good breaking ball and vote called out on strikes, and I think he knew it. Batting in the seventh inning with the assortment of pitches that slow curve just dropped in very slowly at 82 Stephen vote frozen couldn't pull the trigger yet he knew and hitters do know you know he, so Healy hits the home run and we show him in the dugout I'm guessing here but you know what he's thinking about yes I do the two airs <laughs> and as great as a home run is he's still hacked off by the two airs. Yeah. And that's, and that's good. To make up for it. it really is good because I mean, <laughs> talked to him at, at Target Field and 
Uh, he's got he's got a good attitude a bad at I mean I mean good in the sense that he cares and, and that's very important because he will not use the excuse of playing first third and DH -ing. and he didn't play last night takes a lot of work with Chip Hale when he is playing first or third and of course when he DHs he's working both of them that's not easy not easy to do. I think he'll have to continue to just make sure he keeps his emotions in check. Yeah. But he will get better at that oh, as yeah. his yeah. big league career goes on. Plays with a little fire. Yes, he does. It's good to see them. Joyce rips one toward right center. Ducey got a good jump. He gets over there. So two outs here in the second after the Healy home run, and that'll bring up Adam Rosales. Batting eight. The shortstop, number 16, Adam Rosales. Ron Haley on Thursday at Target Field. Look at this location. The pitch to him down and in from Craig Breslow, the former athletic. Just dropped the head of the bat. See, when he gets a pitch down on the zone, it can leave. It did Thursday, it did tonight. The next to bat in Minnesota, he struck out and he gone. You know what? It was a great day. It was a bunt single, a That's home right. run, a strikeout, and an ejection. That's a solid day. In that order. So Ryan Healy gets the ace on the board with home run number five on the year. So third inning coming up, Tigers three, A's one. Number one mobile app for live Oakland A's baseball. Stay connected with a fully customizable experience. Get A's home screen icons and app features, as well as game day, live game video highlights, radio's broadcast, statcast news, and more. Download MLB.com and back today, along with some great food. Oh, come to the yard to see that. Hey, guess who went to the food trucks today and was late getting back? Uh, Jim Price. Vinny. Oh. <laughs> Vinny went to the food yeah, trucks he, today. He said it's a long line. I said that's good though. Vinny, really? go to go to the food trucks, get some food. But well, I said Jim Price, the radio <laughs> announcer for the Tigers, because as I came off the elevator, he and Dan Dickerson, his broadcast yep. partner, they were like excited. They were like, "We're going to the food yep. trucks." I was like, "Really nice." And they were talking about how what they had ordered last night was so good they were going <laughs> back. So the two Tiger radio yep. announcers. Jim and Dan were heading down for the second night in a row. How about you, that? You know, Robert Ford with the Astros, it seems like everybody comes in, they hear about it. They say, hey, his day awesome. travel is pretty good. He puts all these food trucks out there. And, you know, when the visiting media people come in, whether radio, TV, or press, yeah, they go to the press room, but they, hey, go to the food trucks. That's great. And 
See, that's Dan on the right and Jim on the left. Check the haircut for, for Jimmy, huh? Got he a good looks haircut. Good. His wife right. cuts his hair. 68 Tigers world champion. So they're enjoying their time yeah. here at the Coliseum. Good pitch and a swing and a miss. So that's the first strikeout for Jesse Hunt. You know, Jim Price said that uh, he would come to the park. As we take a look at the good fans, it took fielder. a little bit off the pitch and you know, way out in front of it. But Jimmy said, you know, I just go down. Mikey Thalbert takes care of me. But, you know, they've changed the food. So it's why he goes to the food truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The players wanted better food, right? Yeah. Q shot. He gets to it quickly. Smart move. You never know what that ball's going to yeah. do. Other games in the AL West and the Astros and the Angels 1 1 in the third. They had a wild one last night. The, the Astros ended up winning 7 6 in 10 innings. Remember, the Astros gave up four in the ninth to tie the game, but then they sucked it up, bounced back, and they got a run in the 10th. And Astros won last night. Tonight, it's McCullers and Ramirez, Astros at the Angels. You know, that's a sign of a good ball club that can blow a big lead like yep. that and still win. And usually you're so devastated, deflated, and you end up giving up another run, you end up losing it. But they're pretty good. They're very confident. <laughs> Sharp breaking ball that, down and in. That, that was a great. Stephen Volt put down two. Jesse Hahn shook him off. So what Fodor do? Went two. <laughs> That's the emphatic part about <laughs> catching. You call it, and the pitcher shakes you off, and you really want that pitch. You put it down emphatically and say, "Throw it." I called it the second time. That uh, game, 2015, Jesse Hahn, his shutout. Stephen Volt was behind the plate, 0 for 4, and. Still talk about marvel the fact he had a big smile on his face yet he's still 0 for 4. The Tigers have five left handed hitters in their lineup tonight and this is what Jesse Hahn has done the last two years the improvement he has made against left handed batters. Last year they hit 361 off them. this year just 176 and better strikeout percentage. Good pitch there, right on the inside corner. Back to back strikeouts for Hahn. Batting eight. Yeah, Colin didn't like right it, field. but uh, that's a pretty good pitch. Two Sabre Jim coming back. And the first letter of his name is right. It's C, but it's not Cabrera. <laughs> Plus, that was at the knees, perfectly thrown on the inside part of the plate. He didn't like it as he went back to the dugout. Ducey rips one right up the middle. Ducey on board again. Now batting. Last night he had double and triple. Right back, get out of the way. Almost off the right leg, right shin of Jesse Hahn as he just got out of the way. Well, Ducey's doing a nice job, huh? He's hitting over 350. Yeah. Now he does not have a huge amount of at bats, but the point is, is he's getting a chance to play because of the outfield injuries for the Tigers and he's coming through. Iglesias who singled and scored in the second inning. His single was off of Hans glove. Iglesias for his glove is a very very good defensive shortstop. But you get 260 270 batting average out of him I think you'd be thrilled if you were the Tigers. Xavier Bogarts. Made him available and that's right. So the Tigers went after him. It's with the, the Red Sox and Bogarts came up and. The rest is history for the young man in Boston. Worked out well for Iglesias. Yeah, that's Xavier Bogart's pretty good. 
Plus, you come here, you got a chance to work with the great Omar Vizquel. That's pretty impressive. It's not that cold, Omar. I guess he's here. I mean, this is this is gonna be heat wave for the guys when they've been in Detroit. As cold as it's been there. In these sleeves. It could be July the 4th with that guy with a heavy jacket on. In Detroit, short. Two one pitch, a strike, two and two. Hey, Iglesias has had some interesting. Took a fastball, one and all, like it was a three and all. That pitch, he just stood up, maybe waiting too long, but. Sometimes just making that change. There your white shoes. Everybody wants to be an open lane. Joyce on the move. Joyce still on the move. And Joyce makes the catch. A step from the warning track. Side retired. Hitting the runner left. Bottom of the third coming up. 3 1 Tigers. In style by booking a watches.com suite today. Visit athletics.com slash tickets to book your suite. And for all A's fans, receive 20% off your first order at watches.com by using code athletics. Watches.com using code athletics. Wow. About championship plaza, ping pong. They could care less about baseball. You got food trucks for food, a little ping pong. And we'll go home after the game. Watch, keep an eye on the game on the big screen. I think they're concentrated on their ping pong. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, ping pong's not a game that you can glance away occasionally. No, no I mean, you, you better concentrate. All there was that uh, little, what is it called? Uh, what is that little white thing called? A ball. <laughs> a ping pong ball <laughs> and a paddle. You play? No. Oh, good? yeah. Are you good? Oh, no. I wouldn't, it, you slam? Yeah, we had a ping pong table in our basement. Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You we slam used it? To get after it pretty good. Yeah. Well, it usually ended up with some type of significant argument or maybe some pushing and shoving in the family. Really? Oh yeah. Since you were the little brother, you you just did what I, I told doing you, right? The pushing and shoving, just trying to, <laughs> just trying to get a leg up. Oh yeah, it was it was game seven. That's a, that's of the a World good game. Series ping pong. It's a good game. Swing and a miss as Zimmer Zimmerman came in on the hands of Decker. So out number one in the bottom of the third. Is. True story this brought to you by here. McDonald's. June 13th, June 30th, excuse me. Oh, no, slam. 2014. <laughs> yeah, they were honoring the 1984 World Series team that night. And Rajay Davis, a grand slam in the ninth inning. Wow. Yeah. Detroit's first game-ending grand slam in almost a 
decade. Carlos Pena did it in Arizona in 2004. Man, that one hurt. That just caught everybody by yeah. surprise. Well, how about the four game series that the A's had Max Scherzer on the rope the final game when Torrey Hunter hit the three run walk off. Yeah. But Rajay, a little cutter from Sean Doolittle and some news and update on Sean Doolittle. No structural damage. He said that uh, that's encouraging. He said it just stiffened up after the game over the weekend in Ben Houston, I guess, when he pitched and stiffened up, but uh, he said he's feeling fine. See how it works getting himself back in condition to pitch. Not going to be back in a couple weeks. Put it that no. way. Yeah, ten day. While it's great, it's it's hard to come back that quick. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Towards center, Collins is there. Collins almost misplayed it. So Rajay Davis is retired. The second base two. Two. With two outs, Lowry steps up. Yeah, Lowry. Well, the speed Collins has helps him here because he was able to go back. Reach up and bring it down, and we saw his speed last night as he scored from first after walking all over the bases. 84 Tigers team is pretty good, wire to wire. What 35 and 5 under the Hall of Fame manager Sparky Anderson. They started the season. Beat the Padres in the World Series. More action for Collins. And he's got it. That's a nine pitch inning for Zimmerman. And since the Healy home run, he has retired six in a row. SportsCalifornia.com brought to you by Max Muscle. Joe Stiglitz talks baseball with players, coaches, and special guests. The A's Insider Podcast with Joe Stiglitz. It's on NBCSportsCalifornia.com. You can also find it on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. Top of the fourth inning with the Tigers leading three to one, and they're at the top of their order. Romine with a ground out and a two-run triple. So Andrew Romine has had a good series so far. He was two for five with a double last night. So he's filling in nicely for Ian Kinzen. So he's a great feeling for a manager when you're you got one of your better players out, but the guy filling in <laughs> steps up and does a good job. Now he may not be able to do that for a month, but if he does it for a week, ten days, that's a big deal. And it gets a leadoff walk. 
Yeah, the old interim. That's what Brad Osmus is Brad hoping for. And he's getting it out of Romine. The third baseman, number nine. And walk number three Kuzos. by Jesse Hahn, and he is back into the stretch. The Tigers have had ten base runners already in this game. Rangers and the Mariners are underway up in Seattle. It's a 1 1 game in the fourth inning. Martin Perez pitching for Texas. DeYoung, the young right hander who pitched out of the bullpen against the A's. He's starting tonight for the Mariners. Well, you said last night there are three starters on the DL, yeah, so. They're looking for somebody. And then, of course, last night the Rangers won 3 1 in 13 innings up in Seattle. Missed outside, 2 0 to Castellanos. And unfortunately for Jesse Hines, see the pitch count up to 82, which means it's Kurt Young now visiting with him. Those two pitches to Castellanos just overthrowing. And I think, what, I think what happens is you start doing that a little bit. It happened in the game that he went eight, in, eight innings. Shut out baseball, just. Got a little bit towards the end and started throwing and overthrowing it. So look at the pitch usage for the entire year and his last start. So in his last start, less fastballs, more curveballs. Yeah. Slider and change about the same. So you wonder if there's a reason for that. Just a one start thing. That fastball in for a strike. So two and one to Castellanos, who has grounded out, and he's got an RBI single. Swing and a miss as Castellanos pulled off that one. Good change up at 85 and ball just sinking down and in. Still think it's rather interesting, Kent, that on a night in which the bobblehead is sponsored by Comerica Bank, playing the Tigers, and there's a sign behind. So these Tigers must be able to play a home game. It's a sign of backdrop signage, but. Is that one foul? Tigers play at Comerica Park in Detroit. Just kind of an all-arm swing. Yeah, that's a that's a protecting. He, I, I don't know. It's two strikes, and it's almost puzzling to me that a hitter might be swinging almost to protect, thinking he's looking for another pitch. But you got to just look baseball with two strikes. And a high curveball. Castiano strikes out. Same one he hit the second inning for a base hit to drive in a run. Hanger. Batting third. This time Castellanos with a maybe thrown a little bit harder in the fact that it was up out of the strike zone. Try to get under or over the top. See the curveball. Great shot. Well, that was a great shot in the XMO, and especially with the grip on the baseball by Jesse Hahn. Had his middle finger tightly on the same with the index finger right next to it, flipping it down. First pitch to Cabrera. Slices it foul. Cabrera has walked in line to right. I tell you, we have seen. <laughs> I got him to go, Cabrera. Foul ball. It. Can you believe it? Life does not get any better for that youngster. Didn't break a finger. I, I, can you believe it? I just picked it up. <laughs> it was laying on the ground. I just picked it up. That's <laughs> that's the best part of baseball, right? To see a fan in the game 
Boy, I handled that line drive. I took it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it hurt my hand, but I, I, jeez. He's going to tell his oh. buddies at school on Monday that it was just a smash right at him. He's probably and he grabbed it. Yeah. That's, <laughs> there we go. That's a. That's better than a fish story. He's going to create a monster. <laughs> hey guys, look what I got. Is that a sign of the times or what? Oh, is it? <laughs> Catch a foul ball. He's probably what? Maybe 12 years old. Maybe. And he knows Take more. A picture. He knows more about that than we'll ever dream about. <laughs> That's great. I like right behind home plate though, Captain Diamond Level down the watches.com area where the guy just put his hand out and here's some food. You know, just order yeah. food and just eat all night. It's a great seats if you like to eat. Cabrera takes outside. So now the count two and two. With Miguel Cabrera, I don't think there's anything called a chase pitch. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Al Albuquerque do that? <laughs> oh, the A's yes, he did. He On became a uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. public enemy number one. Exactly. There's a base hit wow. right field. And there's your, there's your fastball inside too, Kipe. And you know it's it's really how do you pitch it? it it's so hard. That pitch was inside. Look at the location and what he does with this pitch. Actually turned out to be outside. Voter wanted it inside, but Cabrera, there's a belt buckle pointing to right field. But the one thing about Miguel Cabrera is just starting to say before we saw the excited young man with the baseball. He's got tremendous power to right field. There's not many that can hit them in the seats at Comerica Park as consistently as he does. But if his legs aren't in the picture, he pulls them. And I know Delaire showed it briefly in our open, what he did against Sonny Gray in the playoffs. Daniel Coulomb gets loose quickly. But he can adjust, he being Cabrera, as well as anybody. Yeah, and it's not some adjustment that takes two games to do it. It's <laughs> no. during his at bat. Exactly. So two on one out for Victor Martinez, who has singled and reached down an air. First pitch is a strike to Martinez. Martinez is now 38 years old. He has been around a long time. His 15th year in the big leagues. All started with the Indians. Had some sensational seasons with the Indians. This year with runners in scoring position. 394 average. That's his thing. He's yeah. just going to knock in runs. Yonder is number one. So 0 2 to Martinez. He always does that with the bat and his shoulders, and his hands just kind of waggle a little bit. Rarely strikes out. Get him to hit the ball on the ground at somebody. A good chance you can turn a double play, which the A's would like to get. But always a tough hitter. To pitch and a swing and a foul tip held on by Stephen Vogt. What did I just say? It's hard to strike out. <laughs> That's a great curveball. Watch this ball go down and in, and Victor sees it there, and then it just drops out of sight. Couldn't get under, couldn't foul it off. Stephen Vogt maybe caught the foul tip, but got it before it hit the ground. That's why Victor looked back to see if he'd caught it. So, excellent curveball thrown by Jesse Hahn. So, here's Upton. Justin Upton, a walk, and a ground out to third so far. Alonzo coming over. Maybe. Uh, to Victor Martinez and 
Jesse Hahn a good job. Fastball, change up fastball, then curveball. And got him on three pitches. He says, talk about the curveball coming in so slowly. Lloyd McClendon back with the Tigers, the hitting coach. Ian Kinsler talking and trying to listen to Victor as he now will go upstairs and probably take a look and try to figure out how did he miss the curveball that was thrown as slowly as it was. All in one, the count to Upton. Line has good speed at second. Cabrera does not, and he's at first. Swing and a miss on a curve. 0 and 2. Good curveball, and pitch cast shows it towards the middle of the plate, but good velocity. Good bite to it. So Jesse looks like he may be getting a little bit better as this game has progressed, but unfortunately, he's approaching 100 pitches, which is something they don't build up to very much. Pull that one. And that's what happens when you get the pitch count up. You start overthrowing just a little bit too much. 101 is the high pitch count for Jesse Hahn this year. That was two starts ago. That was the eight inning. One hit, no run performance. It's against the Angels down in Anaheim. Two and two. Now, Seven Boat trying to go up, get it, and bring it back into the strike zone there, but okay, Morales would have nothing to do with it. And that's, you can frame all you want, but if the ball's out of the strike zone, bring it back, it doesn't help because the umpire sees it crossing the plate. Two pitch. That one hit high down the left field line, but foul. It was a hanger. Yes, it was. Fortunately, got out in front. Stays in play, probably would have been caught, but still a dangerous pitch. Eyes light up, hanger. <laughs> More so for Jesse as he's ready to make number 100. Has not really had an easy inning. Look at the crowd tonight here at the Coliseum. Saw a train pass by out there. It's a Bart. I thought it was number four train at Yankee Stadium. That's right. Bartable. <laughs> it's Bartable. That's right. Three and two. Three, two, two outs. Runners will go. Romine at second. Carrera at first. Well, Jesse knows this probably his last pitch, maybe last batter, regardless, with Avila, the lefty, and Kulon getting loose. He's ready. So a big pitch, you have to try to get it done. So this is a big pitch with the score three to one. Yes, it is. In a lot of ways, personally and for the team. Hold it. And the ball gets past vote and Romine rounds the bag and then stops at third. So the bases are loaded. Alex Avila, the left-hander, is the hitter, and I think that's going to do it. That was the fourth walk for Jesse Hahn. Well, unfortunately, as Jesse gets to that point, you can see him overthrowing no and push. pulling the ball and you know, he admits that's what happened, but that's you get close to the pitch count. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and smog experts.
record the earthquakes are taken on the timbers right now at NBC Sports California Plus which can be found on the channels listed on your screen. If you cannot find NBC Sports California Plus log on to NBC Sports California.com call your TV provider. I thought you said timbers but you were saying timbers. 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 Somebody's irate they're playing <laughs> So Daniel Kulo, man, he pitched very well in his last appearance. Good curveball. Got an excellent curveball. And of course, the cutter against the lefties, and that would be Alex Avila, who stays in the game. Second time with the bases loaded. Same in the first inning. And the first pitch is a curve that stays high. Avila, a ground out and a strikeout. Appearance number 11 for Kulo, again, the only lefty in the A's bullpen. But they talk about the reverse splits. Reverse being that his curveball against righties is outstanding. A little more of a cutter slider against lefties. That it gets the call. Now it's 2 0 to Avila. Romine at third, Cabrera at second, Upton at first. Six hits, three runs, three walks, four strikeouts for Jesse Hahn. Kind of a struggle right from the get go. Strike here. Avila helped him out. Pitch was down. That's but that, had a little movement. Huh? Yeah, that's what a cutter does, Kevin. It's amazing. Normally, two and zero before the cutter came into vogue and split on all those other fancy pitches. It was like two and zero. Here's the challenge: fastball. Try to hit it. And now you have to be thinking about movement, which Avila got. Fortunately, swinging over the pitch. That time Avila took it. You know, pretty good take, and it's three and one. And you think opposite field, left field, as Alex Avila does, then lefty on lefty is not such a big deal for him. But for Daniel Coulomb, it is big right now. Pitch bounced at the plate, got a little piece of Avila. So the count is full. So the crowd making some noise. He's trying to stay in this game. Steps in 3 2 2 outs, bases loaded. Runners will be on the move. Here's the pitch. Kerr just missed inside. Romine comes in to score, and it's 4 to 1. Batting seventh, the center fielder, number 18. Very close. Tyler. Well, it was oh. close. He tried to go into it like it was going to hit him. Fooled by it, which most hitters would be with a 3 2 curveball, but unfortunately, a bit too high. So the ball really did not come down. Knuckle curve that he throws, and Savila actually was taking one for the team if he get his elbow out. But this inning has been unbelievable. Cabrera with a base hit, otherwise, walks and strikeouts in this inning. So the A's pitchers now five walks tonight. That run charge to Jesse Hahn. Collins swing and a miss 0-2. Collins has hit a fly ball to the left. He has struck out. Stephen Vogt. Time of possession is heavily in favor of the Detroit Tigers tonight. Wow. 
George Allen. <laughs> I knew if it's football related, you're going to come up with the Just answer. Needed a little time. You yep. caught me off guard. That's fine. I, I, you know, came through big time. Though. Get hard right to Lowry. Has it? Flips the first side, retired. So a run, and the Tigers leave the bases loaded. So 4 1 Detroit as we head to the bottom of the fourth. California Ford dealers look out there they are the early bird special seagulls descend on the Coliseum that's your smart play they were all over before actually before the game and during the beginning of the game a little french fries somebody started one on the field or maybe one of his brother dropped it on the field as he picked okay. it up out of the stands flew over got panicked dropped a french fry his brother said I'll take it and he didn't share it he just gulped it so that's a pretty impressive smart play of the game. And now they're gone. Where'd they go? They're clocked. They have the schedule. They, they, I, I mean, know. They have the A schedule. They have the giant schedule. And it's the same seagulls. They must have read it wrong. Thinking this was a date. What is it? They tag birds? They ought to tag them and then see if they're here and or over there. How many go back and I'd forth? I'd say that it is the same group. I'd say it's exactly the same. I wonder if they like garlic fries. One of them does. <laughs> Chris Davis toward Iglesias quickly moves to his right and makes the play. Batting fourth, first baseman. So since that Ryan Healy home Yonder. run, seven in a row Alonzo. retired now by Jordan Zimmerman. So he has settled in, giving up just that one hit. So now Zimmerman will face Yonder Alonso, who has the most career at bats against the Tigers right hander. He's four for 14. Squaring off in the National League. I mentioned that. 1984 Tigers team Ray, which of course won it all. Terrific team. Almost seemed like they were destined to, to win the year. But that's the last time the Tigers won a World Series. So that's 32 years ago. So that's a long time for, for a, a franchise that since then has had some really good teams and has spent a fair amount of money in the last 10, 12 years and come close a couple times. And that's what Jim Price uh, we referenced him earlier. He was talking about Mr. Ellich, Mr. I there. 
have the, the sleeves, the patch on the sleeves. And, you know, he said for this market, the Tiger market, to have the kind of payroll they have, it's really unheard of. And, you know, Mr. Ellis, like Mr. Yockey in Boston and Gene Autry in Anaheim, tried to spend and get, I mean, do their parts and put a successful uh, club on the field. But they just have out. not been able to. No. Finish it off. Oh six might have been the best time. Yeah. Whatever yeah. they swept the A's and four, that might have been a detriment. Although the A's swept the the Twins, they were swept by the Tigers in the 06 League Championship Series. Whoa. That one's hit to right, and that one's hit deep, and that baby's gone. Alonzo has done it again. Number seven for Yonder Alonzo. And a holy Toledo. Well, we've talked about his aggressiveness, Kai, but I think we just showed it on display. Fastball away. He pulled it at 92 heater away from Jordan Zimmerman, and that's the power. Of course, a mistake a little bit with the pitch up, but Yonder Alonso did not miss it. Of his seven home runs, we talked about four have come on first pitch fastballs. This one, though, a 2 2 fastball, more of a protecting swing. <laughs> he protected all right, very deep in right center. So now seven homers, 20 RBIs for Yonder Alonso. And he leads the athletics and RBIs. So solo home run. And this gentleman, Ryan Healy, has a solo home run. So it's four to two, bottom of the fourth inning. Home run was fifth of the year, and that came in the second inning. Off the end of the bat. And Ryan Healy hit a home run off of Shoemaker, a right hander, then three consecutive lefties before this one tonight off the right hander. And a holy Toledo. It's a beautiful sign. Should have seen it last night, too, but tonight for the first time. But Bill Keane would have said hold it to late on a lot of plays that we saw last night, but tonight a couple of home runs and it's lit up nicely. Two and two the count. Must be lit. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh yeah. Ford Frick winner, the great Bill King, National Baseball Hall of Fame. Yonder's never hit more than nine home runs in a season, right? Nine in the season. He's got seven on the sixth of May. That one's hit toward right center. And Collins gets back, and Collins has it. That's a pretty well hit ball. Now batting the catcher. Healy's retired. Two outs here in the fourth. Steven. Well, the A's bullpen's going to have to hold the Tigers down. It's a four to two game, and it seems like this game has taken forever, which really it is considering. Where the game is and how long it's taken, but a lot of pitches thrown. Jesse Hunt 101. 55 so far for Zimmerman. He's still in the game. And here's Stephen Vogt. Vogt struck out looking in the second inning. Fastball right on the outside corner first strike. Stephen Vogt waiting on a hot streak. Hit a home run opening night. That's his only one of the season. A two run double on Thursday. Man, and the A's needed every run they could get, especially with the big powerful Sano coming up in the ninth inning. Stephen Vogt called a 3 2 curveball from Willie. Santiago Casilla. That one hit to center and hit well, but Collins is going to get back. And midway onto the warning track makes the catch. Side retired. Yonder Alonzo with home run number seven this year. What a terrific season he is having. So as we head to the fifth inning, it's now four to two Detroit.
four to two. Yeah, he's staying close. Junior Palome needs a nice quick inning as he faces Aducey, Iglesias, and then the leadoff hitter Romine. When you think about this game, it's only the fifth inning, and the A's keep coming back. It's up to the bullpen now, starting with Coulomb to keep the Tigers down. You know, with the number of lefties in the lineup, this really bodes well for Coulomb. Well, I have the Tigers with nine runners left on base in the first four innings. You're exactly right. Twice of the bases loaded, first in the fourth, and. Alex Avila came up twice with a loaded. He did walk his last time. Collins, though, grounded out fortunately. The last inning was tough, though. Only one hit. One, two, three walks. And a couple of strikeouts, but resulted in a run. And the one-two pitch, curveball, and Aducey strikes out. So with one out here in the top of the fifth, let's check in with Angela. Batting nine. If you guys haven't made it out to the Coliseum yet this season, you must come and check out the brand new Shy Park Tavern. It was formerly the West Side Club. There's so much going on here. We have the shuffleboard and some pool table action. We've got the Warriors game on and the A's game on the TVs and right behind me. And of course, look at this menu. There's so many yummy things here. We've got burgers, fish and chips, fries, calzone, the s'mores, molten lava cake. That's what I'm talking about. And over 36 craft brews, local style. That's what I'm talking about. It's a uh, Oak Town Brown. It's all about town business tonight. Cheers to you guys. I'm gonna drink to that. I need to take a bigger Jealous. Hey, Kite. You know what? They, they, I, I, I was liking the fish and chips. Fish and chips looked good to me. You know what? That would be a great place to broadcast. Yeah. Yeah, right I mean, in the window. I right? mean, we could have the window. We could have the monitor. We could have the food. We could talk about the food. We could watch the Warriors play, and we could broadcast the A's game. Well, we can't do it tonight. Well, there's a lot of baseball left. This is only May the sixth. I mean, B, I would love it. He'd probably have some food tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Shy Park Tavern. I think we should. Right up against the window. Now, do those windows open? Who cares if there's food? So it was a foul ball. See, we could get a little pregame shuffleboard in. Ray, of course, you and I would be teammates. Well, yeah. But, oh, right, right. Look at that. Good shot right there. I am not a good pool player. Are you a good pool yeah, player, Ray? Sometimes. Really? Yeah. Okay. But terrible at pool. Oh. So ping pong, pool, shuffleboard. Shuffle. I mean. <laughs> Baseball? <laughs> we would have to work at some point. But it'd be fun. That would be fun. That's a good idea. Batting in the first but position. I've heard that Number the food 17. is terrific yeah. in there. Andrew well, we have Roma. gotten some samplings, and I've been told that we're supposed to get some more. Maybe we should work on maybe doing that game. Yeah, that fish and chips look pretty good. I mean, that, come on. One nothing. Wow. They must have been doing that just for us because they're not very good. I could just see you back about 13 no, yeah. feet from that. Was, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was not Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> I knew you were thinking about that because oh, I was too. That was awesome. <laughs> But there is a lot of stuff here. You think about it. I mean, they, they wanted the to have the kids zone. I mean, you've got an adult zone now. That's the way it should be. Kids zones can go out and throw baseballs into a net, but and the adults, hey, kids, go on down there and have fun. We're going to go to, uh, oh, man. Look at, this. Look at the food trucks right behind. You think they're really caring about this game? Nope. This is such a big decision. What's the score of the baseball game? Andrew Romine has been tough. Ground out 
tripled in two runs, has walked. He has scored twice, not close. So Romine has been a thorn in the side of the A's in this series. And Liam Hendricks is warming up in the A's bullpen. Cologne came in with two outs in the fourth inning. He walked in a run and then got the final out. The 22 pitches. This one hit just to uh, below us. See, there's the game on. A little, no. little delay, but not a lot. And I know they listen because I mentioned something on radio about chowder because Vinny pulled up. Yeah. And next thing you know, here come a couple of cups of chowder and, and a lobster roll. I guess the food trucks put out a lineup card of the food they're going to be having. Yeah, they do. That's yep. interesting. It's on Twitter every day. You can check it out. Yeah. Why didn't you share it with me? <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I just get it off Twitter. What? Is it on Twitter? Is that where the line? So it's a lineup of the food trucks. It's a A's lineup card that has the food, food trucks, trucks on. on. And, and what each truck has in whatever lineup. Because I remember that day Chowder was fourth. Bad cleanup. Bad cleanup. In the dirt, Romine swings and misses. A nice play by Stephen Vogt as he blocked it. Had to make sure that Iglesias didn't take off. Batting second. That's the second Third strikeout base. for Cologne. Nicholas Castellanos. So with two outs, here's Castellanos. You know, Cap, we saw Wednesday with Jason Castro the importance of a catcher blocking balls in the dirt. And, you know, that, while you think, well, runner's not a third, but he's at first, he could have been put in scoring position if the ball had gotten by Stephen Vogt. So the hard work they put in with Marcus Jensen, as you say continually, that what pays off in a game, something that really goes unnoticed in a lot of cases. Curveball tap foul past Dave Clark. Third base coach. So you get that Twitter every day. Stephen Vogt with a curveball from Daniel Coulomb. So Stephen Vogt using his body, keeping in front of him. So the hitter would not have been able to advance, but the runner at first could have gotten a second base. That is Iglesias, and that's been put in a scoring position. One to Castellanos, who's one for three. Good slider, and it's 0 2. <laughs> oh, man. My Parker likes his desserts. Wow. Oh, where's that truck? Is that truck out there every day? Oh, nice showing off. Huh? Gosh. What, what, on the lineup car, where does the dessert? I didn't, I didn't see that. It's not, you haven't seen it? I did not see that. What was the name of that track? Lexi's Lexi. Frozen Custard. Okay, if you're listening, Lexi Frozen Custard. TV booth, home side. <laughs> We're not proud. Or at least I'm not. Nope. Oh, man. Oh, Sunday. thank you. Hot fudge Sunday. Yeah, the kids' Sunday chocolate, worms and dirt. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a Tiger fan. You think that Tiger fan's not happy? He's got his Michigan sweatshirt on. The Detroit Tiger cap. And a handful of dessert. Fastball is high. Two and two the count. You know, the press room is good also. It's really improved a lot. Yep. Good food in the press room. Good food, food trucks. And we're still waiting for the Coliseum food. We're supposed to be having an appearance from them. The competition between the food trucks and the Coliseum. <laughs> Coliseum is the light. Two, two pitch is hit to right field. Joyce hustling back, still going back, still going back. It's over his head up against the wall. With two outs, Iglesias was running all the way, and he will score easily. Castellanos with a double. 
Something about the curveball with the Glaciers or with the Castellanos because he had a curveball from Jesse in the second and here it comes again inside out swing and maybe he's learning from the guy hitting behind him because that is a Miguel Cabrera swing to perfection. And the ball just kept carrying kept carrying. Joyce went back looked like he had a shot and you know if you really wanted good luck the ball could have hit the front of the warning track and bounced into the stands. It would have been just a double. So Bob Melvin comes and takes the ball from Colom Hendricks coming in when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and smog experts. California is brought to you by Caltrans Stormwater. Keep our highways clean. Protect our water. ProtectEveryDrop.com. So the Tigers have added a run. It's five to two. They got a runner at second. That's Castellanos. He had the run scoring double. So the new pitcher is Liam Hendricks. Hendricks pitched in last night's game. Two big strikeouts in. Only through 12 pitches, so did not get overworked. I think at this point, Ray, this is an appearance by Liam Hendricks just to get out of this inning. It's exactly, and he did it last night, striking out two, and that was it. Two thirds of an inning, two strikeouts, but I mean, this is a tough chore to come in to face this man, Miguel Cabrera. Oh, and that got both pretty solid. Bruce Maxwell got one off the. The mask last night. A smile from Stephen Vogt. He said, "I'll take it in from my mask versus where he's gotten it before." But this is a shot. See how it goes out and gets the ball. And Cabrera. Oh, if you could look at Cabrera swinging the bat and Reddick, the difference, and that's why he had the two catchers interference. Got to let the ball come to you. It's so so tempting to go out and try to get the ball, but you got to watch. Sometimes you have to know the hitters and. A rare different type of hitter than what we saw in Reddick in Houston. I'm not compared their hitting abilities, it's the hitting styles and the way they swing the bat. One and two with a runner at second. Yeah, Bruce Maxwell last night, watch this shot or listen to it. Launch. Pushed him back. Held up by. And you know the impact of that when you're in your catcher position and it's hit so hard that you're pushed back. Getting help from Tom Woodward, the home plate umpire. And a good fastball, 95 miles an hour. Looked like Cabrera may have been looking for something else. So a run for the Tigers, bottom of the fifth coming up. Detroit five and the A's two.
segment on Saturday, June the 3rd, when they face 15,000 Chris Davises. Actually, the Nationals face the A's and 15,000. Happy fans will stride home with a Chris Davis bobblehead presented by Xfinity. Arm of the bobblehead moves, depicting Chris's signature salute after a home run. The salute for tickets, visit athletics.com slash promotions. That's interesting. 15,000 Chris Davises. Wow. Cabrera reaches up and grabs the line drive off the bat of Joyce. Boy, that ball was smoked. Cabrera leaped up and grabbed it. The shortstop, number 16, Adam. He struck out on a pitch, and I agree with you, looking for something else, but here, time is semi jump perfectly. So one away here in the bottom of the fifth, and then I'll bring up Adam Rosales. Still thinking about the strikeout when he. Flail at the fastball. Zimmerman pumps that one in there for a strike. Zimmerman has given up two hits, both solo home runs. He has walked one, struck out two, and you see the pitch count at 64. The 30 year old right hander Jordan Zimmerman. Astros and the Angels still tied 1 1 in the seventh inning. Right at Collins. And Collins grabs it. In fact, both those games that we're keeping an eye on that one and the Rangers and the Mariners. Same Double score, fielder. same inning. 1 1 in the seventh. Yes. So, those games are heading into the late innings. So, just four pitches to get the first two outs here in the fifth inning for Zimmerman. Decker struck out swinging in the third. Decker getting a start in left field with Chris Davis getting half the night off. Davis is the DH. Decker had a hot start with the A's, and he's cooled off quickly. Well, I don't know. Of course, at the big league level, you approach the game a certain way. It'll find you. Remember his first game, he had everything to left field. A couple of hits, and in Seattle just kept hitting the ball to left field, and all of a sudden he's getting pitches where he's opening up, and that is not what he did when he first came up. Foul ball alley. He's on the ground crew now. He's, uh, I saw him tonight. I said, What are you doing? He said, oh, I enjoy this much better. Then run around for foul ball. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he gets paid instead of having to pay for a seat. <laughs> Sit down in the ground crew area and watch the game for free. Two pitch. Took a little off and it'll sink on that one. One and two to Decker. It's a cambio change up. And it was a good one. And that's strikeout number three for Zimmerman. So he has a nine pitch, three up, three down inning. We're on to the sixth from the Coliseum. Five two Tigers.
Stewart, Dallas Braden, Jose Canseco, Joe Brody Brazil this year on A's post game live. Pip and Shooty, well, they're there as well. They're kind of the glue. A's post game live following every game. We found out today that Brody Brazil named his dog Melvin after Bob Melvin. <laughs> so we'll just let you stew on that one for a while. Stu, that's no good. Pun intended. That's good. Stu's not even in the studio. So, if you want to name your dog after a big league manager, <laughs> good that's luck. totally up to you. Good luck. I don't think I would admit it. Well, let's see. You'd have to just decide if that's what you wanted to do. Good. That's Brody Brazil. Yeah. Brody Brazil. Always remember it's Brody. Not Glenn, not Ray, not Joe, B.I., Jason. Just trying to think of, you know, names that you could throw out there. Art, if you want to name it after Art Howe. <laughs> Mock after Maka. How about KK? Tony. Ken Korak. Chipper, yeah. It's right, Chipper. Dusty. <laughs> Rio. Hack. He was hacking. He hit it hard, but right at Alonzo for out number one. Now, Victor was so proud of his Thank son, you. who's also Number named eight. Victor, but not a yeah. junior. Okay. He said he's hit three home runs. He's been swinging the bat well for his team down in Orlando. I'll leave the puppy's names to you. Well, I'm just, you know, I've just given our viewers some thoughts. If you want to name your dog after the manager. <laughs> Healy. Comes in to get the big hop, fires to first, and Upton's retired. So two quick outs here for Liam Hendricks. Batting six. It's not the often catcher, the ball hits the plate Alex and actually Avila. comes down quickly enough for an infielder to throw out a, a hitter. But that one had a thud to it. And there's the thud, but got to it quickly, did Healy. Upton thinking about a base hit, did not get there. Yeah, you know what? You could. <laughs> Maybe just if you're stuck on that, aren't well, you? because I mean, I think Brody's thing was let you know, let's make it an A's thing. So I think we'll, we'll just keep it to an A's thing. So you, know, you could name it after the coaches. You said Chipper, Aldo, Aldo the dog, Emo, Emo the dog, <laughs> oh. Marcus. <laughs> Bushy, Bushy the dog. After the hitting coat, there's Emo. In the Hall of Favor, Phil. Pole. Sure, you could name it after the bullpen catcher. Pole the dog. You could name it after Steve Vucinich. Boos. Oh, man. How long is this game? <laughs> I'm, 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 if you're into naming your dog after. Certain A's employees. <laughs> one and one the count to Alex Avila. Strike one and two. Patrick's a little bit of a tailing fastball, and then the Tigers have left at least one on base every inning. This is the one the A's are trying to finally get a one, two, three. Stay close enough to come back against the Tigers. I think he went around. Yes, he yeah. did. Volt's going to have to hustle after it, and he's not going to be able to get to it in time. And Avila's going to be a bore. And he'll strike out wild pitch. Which are always frustrating. Seven, Tyler Collins. Well, a hard slider. Spiked it. Check swing off the chest protector, Stephen Vogt. And when Avila, once you turn around and he looked, and Gabe Morales pointed to him, said, "Yes, you went." That was a home plate call, not an appeal to third base. There's the point. Avila saw it, took off, and Stephen Vogt had no chance. Oh, so it, a runner at first, two outs. Was in Houston, last week when we saw a wild pitch to an A's player, and didn't run. 
But Stephen Vogt trying to block it, could not. There's the swing. Avila didn't think so. He looked around and just happened to see the home plate umpire make the call. And no reason to question it. Just take off the first and he made it. Right there for a strike to Tyler Collins, who's 0 for 3. Remember when Philip Umber pitched the perfect game in Seattle, the final play. I think was Brzezinski or some no no it wasn't Brzezinski but somebody had a check swing and they said no way no way and if they'd taken off immediately well there's a wild pitch and that was way wild nothing Stephen Vogt could do about that strike out wild pitch wild pitch advanced to second and you're down low and this pitch at about 95 high all you can do is go straight up and that's usually what happens off the tip of your glove to the backstop. Pretty straight away for Collins. Strike three called on the inside corner. So the Tigers leave a runner, bottom of the sixth coming up. Chris Davis is going to hit third. He's need to get something going, trailing 5 2. break brought to you by T-Mobile. We're going to take a look at the A's minor league system. Just a few of the guys who are maybe playing well. Jacob Bruckman, an outfielder, left-handed hitting outfielder, played a fair amount in spring training. Ray, he's just back from the Sable list, so he's getting back into it with Nashville. And also, Franklin Barreto having a terrific year in Nashville. He's hitting 359. We'll keep a close eye on him. Grant Holmes, who came over in the Reddick trade to the Dodgers, the A's number three-ranked prospect. Starting to pitch a lot better in double A and AJ Puck the big left hander pitching in Stockton and he has started to pitch better as well. So that's a little minor league update. Rajay Davis goes after the first pitch lofts one into right center field. And Collins has it so that's out number one. The one part of the. Second. The second baseman. Minor league description was with Franklin Burrell at AAA playing well. Yeah. That means a lot because he's had two great spring trainings for the A's. 16 and 17. Kid can play. Yep. And we have seen Miguel Cabrera. We've talked about him and I said it last year when Franklin Barreto from Venezuela also said, I can be better than Miguel Cabrera. Easy, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Barreto hitting 359 in 26 games. He's got four homers, 15 RBIs. His on base percentage is 414. His slugging percentage is 563. So he is having a, just a terrific year. Still a very young man. But doing what he needs to do at the AAA level as Zimmerman goes down. Lowry hits it right back up the middle. 
Yeah, Larry looking Batting over Zimmer to make sure he's okay. So Frankie Montas Chris. getting Dang close to the bullpen as this ball right back up the middle and Zimmerman with the ball going towards his head, duck down. But you know it's amazing that balls hit so hard back when you see the pitcher duck. Ball's past him. It's almost out of fear that they're ducking sure. with the ball, wondering, oh my gosh, if that had hit me, but scary as they always are. Anything up the middle. Jesse Hahn had one close to his right leg. So here is Chris Davis. No swing. So runner at first, one out. Well, this is a good hold up, which he did not. <laughs> but Adrian Johnson, it happened so quickly. It was called the ball. Davis taps oh. that one foul. See, that would have been a great shot to go to right field on that ball. The slider was a hanger, opened up just enough that he fouled it, but that's a tremendous power that Chris Davis has. He had a ball on the line drive in the first inning that was caught. That was ball was the right field. A lot of good young players in the system. The A's have a good one here in Frankie Montas, who's warming up in the bullpen. One one pitch to Davis. Backs him off. Yeah, there's a young man in double A Ray. Outfielder by the name of BJ Boyd. Left-handed hitter. He's hit 381. He's not a power hitter, but I've heard good things about him. An on-base percentage of 455. One of the things about those young players, talked to executive vice president Billy Bean about when do you bring them up? What's the key? Because that's a good question. You know, because you can bring them up too quickly, and this is this is this is called the big leagues for a reason. You know, and they can sure. they can expose guys. So it is important sometimes to take the time, let them get the experience on the moderate level. And you know, Franklin Barreto, the way he performed in spring training, you could say, well. To play in the big leagues, but he needs some uh, some seasoning, and he's getting that at Triple A Nashville. What'd you get, by the way? What's that? I don't even want to go <laughs> there. Well, Joe, blame it on Joe. He brought it to you. Two and two, the count. Davis with the fly ball to right, ground out to short. Take. Now it's a full count. Jim Lowry on base, and of course the home runs only two hits for the A's prior to this inning, and both of them were home runs. So Jed Lowry getting the single, Ryan Haley with a home run, same with Alonzo, and so the A's really just three hits on the night, the two home runs and a single. Double barrel bullpen activity for the Tigers. Two pitch got him swinging. He went with a slider, and it was a good tight slider. Davis checks with A. Morales to see if it was a strike. Well, you had a pretty good idea it was going to go. He threw it to the point that it may have looked like it was going to be a fastball in the corner, but if you can see the spin, unfortunately, there's the spin. The slider, I meaning it's going to be breaking away from you. But there's so little time to decide, less than a second to decide. Once the pitcher throws the ball, what you're going to do, and you got to determine the pitch location. To a lefty and a righty. Blaine Hardy, the lefty. Shane Green, the righty. You see the pitch count for Jordan Zimmerman is now 77, which isn't too bad. Dull joins Montas out of the A's bullpen. The A's are able to score. It might be dull. Frankie Montas, though. The A's are trending by three. Either way, two pretty good pitchers to decide who's going to come in. Breaking ball. So Zimmerman snapped off. Snapping off some good breaking balls when he absolutely has to. And especially 3 2 slider. No hesitation either from Avila calling it and Zimmerman throwing it. Zimmerman's best start this year. Was his first start of the year when he went six innings, gave up just one run. 
since then he has not been real sharp but he's been able to get three wins. Fastball two and two pitch away. And gone very deep to right field. But as the great late catfish Hunter would say and Burt Blylev and guys who gave up a lot of home runs their solos and while they look good. Nobody's in front of them and makes a huge difference. That's why one now could really make a big impact. That one is ripped to right field. A Ducey's back and it is gone. Five to four. Have a season Alonzo. So for the first time in his career, two home runs in a game. Fastball, almost the identical spot that he hit his previous home run. And this time, a line drive. Just to the left of the out of town scoreboard. As you're looking at it, just over the 362. And just barely, but that's all that matters. That's a great. Hey, Karen once said, front row. They all count the same, and that one does. So finally a two run home run. Yonder Alonzo first two home run game. What a season he is having eight home runs for a best nine. Healy hits it hard but foul. And twenty two RBIs to go along with those eight home runs. And on top of that hitting well over three hundred. And go glove first base. Keeps hitting like that, they might recognize him as an outstanding first baseman. That should not be part of it, but sometimes it is. Healy got a good pitch to hit there. It's a high and foul. So Healy behind in the count 0 and 2. He homered in the second and hit a fly ball to center field in the fourth. Time this year, the A's have hit three home runs in the game. Did it opening night. Chris Davis had two. Stephen Vogt, they did it also against the Rangers. In the midst of their winning streak. So, as Brody, the great Brody said, a lot of home runs. Sometimes solos, but tonight two solos and a two run shot. That's a base hit to left field. Healy with a two out single. Zimmerman, who was rolling along, has now given up three hits in this inning, and that's going to be it. That's a fastball, and Ryan Hayden with a pitch down. Solid single. Alonzo, two home runs. Ryan Hayden, a solo home run, and a solid base hit. So, when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and smog experts.
is presented by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Well, Jordan Zimmerman gone after five and two thirds innings. Well, he can't lose it. He could get a no decision. He could win it. But he's asking a lot of work from the bullpen. This is Blaine Hardy, the lefty. Three lefties in that Tigers bullpen. Hardy making his eighth appearance. And this is Chad Pender hitting. Indeed, Pender hitting for vote. Pender on the season. Seven hits in 23 at bats. Homer in three RBIs. He's had some pretty good swings the last week. He has. So. But you know, this is the sixth inning, Kai. And the A's had two catchers. One of them's just been taken out. Max will be coming in. Josh Fegley on the disabled list with the concussion symptoms. So one and two now to Pinder. Would hit next if Pinder can get aboard, and he chases a pitch well out of the strike zone. So Hardy does his job; he gets out of it. But the red hot Yonder Alonso strikes again, his eighth home run of the year. This was a two-run shot. So as we go to the seventh inning, we got a ball game, folks. Tigers five, A's four. Select premium games have the opportunity to participate in the 50 50 raffle presented by Better Health East Bay, a Sutter Health Foundation. Tickets are sold from the time gates open until the last out of the sixth inning. Winning ticket is announced after the last out of the seventh inning. That's coming up, folks. Winner will receive 50% of the jackpot with half the proceeds benefiting the A's Community Fund. To learn more information, please visit www.athletics.com slash raffle. So here's Ryan Dole when it's time for a change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up, and smog expert. So fourth pitcher of the night for the A's, and it's Dole. And Maxwell stays in the game or comes into the game for vote as the catcher. So a Ducey, Iglesias, Romine here in the seventh inning of a five to four game. Tigers feel like they should be winning this game by more. They have stranded 11 runners in the first six innings. Well, Liam Hendricks did a great job in his inning and a third. Three strikeouts, and of course, strikeout with a wild pitch put a runner on base. Another wild pitch put him at second, but struck out Collins to end the inning. The bullpen doing a great job, but boy, they have to continue because right now. He's pulled it within one, and all those left on base, as you mentioned, he 
need to try to keep them with the LOBs. Ducey has reached out an air and scored. He has singled and he has struck out. So one for three. It's three for seven in this series. Takes another pitch on the outside corner to strike three and two. Mariners have taken the lead in the seventh inning over the Rangers three to one and they're still batting. Astros and the Angels one one they go to the ninth. Twang and a miss he struck him out. So Dull strikes out the first hitter he faces and let's see what's going on with Angel. <laughs> Guys I'm in the Plaza Suites with Nick Wong a season ticket holder for over 30 years. We're with friends and family and Nick who is this. This is Charlie. He's my Muppet of myself. <laughs> You made a Muppet of yourself. How did this come to be? Uh, well, I was actually given uh, the Muppet as a gift from my sister, and I just started to slowly turn him into me over time, I guess. I gave him a mustache to match mine and kind of the wardrobe to match what I usually wear to games. You told me that he has different wardrobe as well, right? Yeah, uh, he has a Warriors outfit, an A's outfit. He's also got formal wear, and we actually have at very exact outfits of each other that uh, I would wear on occasion. And I heard that you've also met the other fan who has a puppet as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I actually met him at, uh, I, was, I believe it was a away game a few years ago. And uh, the Muppets, the puppets didn't meet each other, but I, uh, yeah, I met him and it was very awesome. Charlie, what do you think about this game? I'm hoping for a comeback here. <laughs> well, we're all open too. Guys, back up to you. All right, thanks, Angela. <laughs> It's a good A's fan right there. Did Both his, of them. Did you see his outfit? I did. Yeah. Would you like to wear the coveralls? Oh yeah. This this is this the is Eckersley. This is his long lost cousin. Yeah. <laughs> the Eckersley this guy was Bob. a little bit of a good luck charm though. Yeah. He's got something going with. Then he crushed the popcorn. Oh, over a little bit. So a swing and a miss by Iglesias. A's pitchers Ray have struck out 11. Yeah. Well, Ryan Dell from 3 and 0, oh, three fastballs past Adusi, and then a pitch in the dirt, the hard slider to Iglesias. I got to run. Just go to. F so two away, and here's the top of the order, Andrew Romine. Here's your 11 strikeouts. First pitch, just a bit outside, close. So these bullpen trying to do their job and keep this game close. Outside corner, first strike. Dull pitched on Thursday in Minnesota. One inning gave up a hit, nothing else. A little flare foul toward the A's bullpen. So one and two the count. The Tigers. Jumped out ahead in this game, three nothing in the top of the second inning. And they led four to one. They've led five to two, and now it's five to four. With eleven left on base. They tried to make it eleven after the seventh inning, which means it'll be a one-two-three inning. Something the A's have not had tonight. Nope. That band's had a good night. Yonder Alonzo. Two home runs, three runs batted in. Great at first base as always. Roll to the right side. Right to Lowry. And the A's indeed get that first three up, three down inning of the night. Seventh inning stretch. We'll see if that young man can help the A's get the lead. Five four Tigers. <laughs>
seventh inning. Make sure you join us tomorrow afternoon. The Ace of the Tigers will wrap up this three game series. A young left hander by the name of Daniel Norris will pitch for the Tigers, and Sonny Gray will make his second start here in 2017. Our coverage begins at 12 o'clock with A's pregame live. And you can now stream the A's on the go with NBCSportsCalifornia.com and the NBC Sports app. So Matt Joyce to lead it off as Blaine Hardy stays in the game at least for one more hitter. A little pop up and that is going to drop. Foul. Well, he needed that. A's needed that. He needed it. Everybody needed it. Even Aldo needed it. <laughs> Aldo the dog. <laughs> no, you're going to run with that, aren't you? They were running with everything else tonight. Our good friend Mike Eldreth. Right, the chipper. The chipper, see, he's he's abiding by the rules. Stay either in the coaching box or behind it. Not like Dave Clark Five, who's way in front. Matt Joyce tonight has hit a fly ball to right field, and he is lined to first. Sweeping curve is outside one and one. Joyce drives one left center field. It's going to hang up though for Collins. Step onto the warning track. He's got it. So one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Got a game. The shortstop. So the Warriors the win tonight in Utah, 102 to 91. So the Warriors now have a three games to none lead in that series. Game four will be on Monday night. So the Warriors will try to. Wrap things up in that series. So, congratulations to the Warriors. When it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up, and smog experts. Sports California is brought to you by the 2017 Jeep Cherokee with an EPA estimated 30 highway miles per gallon by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency by Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places by AAA. What does your insurance do when it's not doing insurance? It should do more. Go to AAA.com for more details and by the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. So the new pitcher is Alex Wilson. Wilson takes over after Blaine Hardy faced two hitters, retired both of them. And here's Wilson. 0-1-1 with a good 2.38 ERA. Facing Adam Rosales and Jeff Decker has come out into the on deck circle.
Rosie looking for his first hit. Couple fly balls, one to right, one to left. A line drive, but Iglesias goes down to a knee to grab it. Two away here in the bottom of the seventh. Just could not hook enough. There's a difference right there. Simply when an infielder is able to position himself without the possibility of a double play. If he's playing for a double play, then that ball is in left field for a base hit. But he was positioned exactly straight up and was able to rob Rosales of a base hit. So two away, here's Decker. Decker bunts it and Cabrera caught it goes into a slide grabs it around the shoot tops and that was a terrific play by the big first baseman Miguel Cabrera nothing for the A's in the bottom of the seventh as we head to the eighth. and you'll be able to stream every NBC Sports California broadcast on your desktop or mobile device. A's game streaming on the go on the NBC Sports app. 5-4 Tigers lead the A's. Top of the eighth inning from the Coliseum. Crowd tonight, 16,651 at Bob Melvin bobblehead night. Boys are playing better. Just need to have a comeback win nice. and that will make him happy. That would make him very happy. Make all of us happy, actually. All the Muppets, and all of our, our good friends at the ballpark <laughs> tonight. Castellanos to lead it off, so it's the the big fellas for Ryan Madsen who comes in. Now the bullpen is allowed one run. Is Ryan Madsen pitching eighth? Kulom, Hendricks, Dull, now Madsen, and is it just keep coming back? Just try to hold the Tigers down. So now it's a game of the bullpen, both the clubs. That one's a strike. One and one to Castellanos, who is two for four with a single, a double, and a couple of RBIs. Castellanos rocking the white shoes, too, huh? Yeah. Swing and a miss. One over top as Madsen threw him something off speed. A good change up. It comes out of his hand. Perfectly thrown. Yeah, Cap, I thought last year we found out that as long as 50% of the colors you shoe is your team color, are your team colors, then it's okay. But <laughs> I don't think what Iglesias and Castellanos are wearing are 
representative of their tiger colors. I don't think white is part of it. Maybe at home. High fastball. Castiano strikes out for the second time. Same thing Matson did against the Mariners on that Saturday Thank afternoon. You. Struck out three in the ninth Four. inning with this type Miguel. of a fastball out of the strike zone, but because of its great changeup, they could not hold up on the fastball that was up out of the strike zone at 96. That's your Xfinity 95 plus, yep. right? Running it up there. Cabrera, it's jammed a little bit, rolls it foul. Cabrera is one for three with a single and a walk. He's lined out, he has struck out. Curve stays high. Well, the Mariners scored seven runs in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the Mariners lead the Rangers eight to one now, top of the eighth. So one and two. It's almost like you never see him swing and miss. He's, and I think it's hard to believe that two strikes in his last at bat that he swung through a Liam Hendricks fastball. You just don't expect somebody as good as that to be looking for a particular pitch with two strikes. Well, that's yesterday. And here comes today, and he's pretty consistent. One's a double, one's yeah. a single. Both hit very hard. Both well, the right field stays inside the ball as well as anybody. And I think the great Hall of Famer Al Kaline said it best about him that we talked last night never pulls open, never opens up on a pitch. Stays inside out as well as anybody. Tremendous power to the opposite field. You do it at Comerica Park as deep as it is to right field. That's saying something. Behind in the count, one and two. Lays off that one as it drops low. That's the RBI leaders in Major League Baseball history. Cabrera, 44th on the list, seven behind Beltre. Swing and a miss. He went upstairs and gets the strikeout. 13 strikeouts by A's pitchers tonight. Well, it's amazing. You throw a great change up. That's why the heater is on you. It's out of the strike zone. 95 and up out of the zone. Cabrera not able to catch up. And Ryan Matson back to back strikeouts. And that's just the ability to have a great change up that looks like your fastball. I only see it. One, what do you two, got? Twelve, two backward K's for called strike threes. Normally they do it for starters, don't they? I only counted twelve. Well, go give him another K. They probably didn't expect to have that many. And Victor Martinez beats the shift and rolls it into left center field. The left fielder. So Martinez, two for five, five hits in the series. Now the fastball, and this may have been just the late swing, but guided it into left field. Yesterday, of course, he had the two-run single, very similar location, only a breaking ball from Andrew Triggs back door that he drove into. I wouldn't shift him. Play him straight up. Huh? Especially after what we've seen last year. Because <laughs> <That's right. laughs> hindsight's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Here's Upton. So you gotta remember, I got 13 strikeouts. I'm counting the strikeout wild pitch because that goes down. Well, of course, I, but they forgot it. Maybe. But that's right, because there was an lob, and they forgot to put it down. You're exactly right. In for a strike. You send somebody out there to ask them if they forgot about the strikeout wild pitch. 
There's a famous one like that in the World Series, wasn't there? Well, there's a pass ball. Pass ball, I think, yeah. But, uh, What's the guy's name? Can't think of it. Fred Merkel? <laughs> Isn't it Merkel? <laughs> uh, no, don't think so. This big hop for Adam Rosales. Flips to second side, retired. We are going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Tigers five, A's four. You by your local Toyota dealers. Five, nine, and oh for the Tigers, four, five, and two for the Athletics. So the A's have two more shots to see if they can finish the comeback and win this game over the Tigers. Jesse Hahn got knocked around tonight. Four runs, three earned runs, four walks, and three and two thirds innings. But another big offensive night for Yonder Alonso. He has his first two homer game in his career, and he has three RBIs. So 5 4, bottom of the eighth. And the new pitcher is Justin Wilson. Alex Wilson, the right hander, finished off the seventh inning. This is Justin, the left hander. And faces the top of the A's order Davis, Lowry, and Davis. Jay Davis is 0 for 3 tonight. Swing and a miss. Chased the ball. 1 and 1 with a 1.54 ERA for Justin Wilson. Says a lot about his ability to get righties out because you got three coming up in this inning. Switch hitter Jed Lowry follows, but Rajay then Chris to follow. Jed Lowry, so Rat Ospus going to his lefty. Wilson's been a workhorse. Three years with Pittsburgh, a year with the Yankees, and now this is his second year with Detroit. Catches the outside corner, two and two. Need a base runner, get that tying run aboard. With the big hitters waiting to come up. Good take by Davis, three and two. Flyouts for Rajay Davis, and he hits this one in the air. Shallow left, Upton trots in. So Rajay Davis is retired. He's 0 for 4, and that'll bring up Lowry. The First, the Yankees, if the Yankees, the Tigers' yeah. closer is Lowry. Francisco Rodriguez. Ooh. 
just keeps on closing games for whoever he's with. And he's getting ready. Still does a pretty good job. To put it on his arms, okay? Can't tell you. Could be Gaylord Perry stuff. You know? <laughs> I think they honored Gaylord Perry tonight in Seattle. I know he was at the game. 300 wins. He won his 300th game with the, the Mariners. Mariners yeah. Right? Yeah. Did not pitch there a real long time. I don't recall. Long toss up again, and now Santiago Casilla starts to loosen up in case the A's would grab the lead. One to Lowry. Owen oh, two to Lowry. Lowry walked in the first, hit a fly ball to center field in the third, singled and scored in the sixth. He scored on Alonzo's second home run. Well, Lowry's going to have to fight back down in the count. Very close. Did it get any of the strike zone? Nope. Got Xfinity though at 97. Couple shakes by Justin Wilson. Now he's ready. Again outside. So two and two, 97 miles an hour. Yeah, they talk about managers, pitching coaches, hitting coaches, talk about reverse splits. Well, you're facing three righties. That also has no hesitancy when it comes to having his lefty face three righties. You see why he threw 97. I don't think it really matters who's hitting. Roll foul. And the Tigers, three left handers in that bullpen. We've seen, now seen two of them. Hardy, two thirds of an inning, and now Wilson. Right now, this inning is Justin Wilson's. That bullpen is quiet. Mila sets up inside and. Wilson hit the mid, but off the plate. Very good take by Jen Lowry again. Just off the plate, evidently. And 96, so good fastball. He's got a cutter also, and Jed backing off as the pitch was inside. Three two pitch is lofted foul. And nobody's going to get it. This ball boy wasn't paying much attention. I don't think. It's getting late, right? <laughs> the ball hit the top of the uh, bullpen, three and a half inch roof, and he going, "What happened? Where'd that come from?" <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> He's thinking, "Why am I here? It's cold night. Got my hoodie on. Got my double ear flap, and it coming, and I don't even see it." The 3 2 pitch, here it is. Swing and a miss, struck him wow. out. 96 miles an hour. He really just challenged him. Not really. He's got a little cutter, but he, he doesn't hold Back anything there. back when it comes to throwing to fastball right over the top. And at 96, perfectly placed. And Jet Lowry swinging through it. And he goes back and said, How did I miss that? And you really don't care how hard it's thrown, it's straight. Here's Chris Davis. A little bit high, 90 mile an hour pitch. <laughs> Davis has hit a fly ball to right. He has grounded to short, and he has struck out. 
90 mile an hour changeup. <laughs> I was going to say, it didn't look yeah. like his fastball. No, it's a changeup. Big swing and a miss. There's your challenge again, 96 miles an hour. Davis in this series, a one for seven. Right over the top. Pretty impressive, this young lefty. And really, we've seen closers, not closers, but guys come out of the bullpen throwing that hard. And, you know, good fastball. And, and that's why it's surprising at times you see the scouting reports on starting pitchers, and they're throwing the ball mid to upper 90s. And they almost got beat with a hanging cut fastball. Chris just found it back, but for right in the middle of the plate. Look at pitch cast on this one. Right there. <laughs> That's a just miss. And the pitcher is saying thank you. But you know, that's probably the dominant fastball in 97 that helped get away with the hang. Mila wants it outside. Right there. Perfect pitch by Wilson. Side retired. So Justin Wilson has a couple of strikeouts and a nice three up three down inning ninth inning coming up. The game, let's make it dry as of the game. This first home run by Jan Alonso, a fastball. Thrown by Zimmerman, right center field. So what does Yandra do? He does it again, almost identical pitch. And this would be a two-run home run over the 362 mark. So Yandra Alonso, first career two-home run game. Sit now eight Alex on the season. Avila. A spectacular start to the 2017 season for Yandra Alonso. Frankie Montas trying to do what the rest of the A's bullpen has done, and that is to keep it where it is right now. A one run game. Let's see what they can do in the ninth inning. So here's Alex Avila. Avila takes a fastball that's high. If I got 13 strikeouts, the A's pitchers against the Tigers. That's right, you and me both, buddy. How, how many of the K's they have outside? Wherever that is. Oh, wow, pitch is messing with people. I bet it is. Angels won tonight, two to one. They scored a run in the bottom of the ninth inning on a fielder's choice. Mike Trout did not play. A little bit of a sore hamstring, so they kept him out of the lineup. But the Angels beat the Astros two to one. Angels get back to the 500 mark at 16 and 16. Astros with the loss now 20 and 11. Yankees beat the Cubs again 11 to 6. 
Brett Anderson started that game for the Cubs pitched a third of an inning gave up six hits and five runs it was five nothing after half an inning and the Yankees did not let up. <laughs> he didn't get hurt. No I don't think so he was backing up a lot of bases. I know that. <laughs> well sometimes he can get hurt doing that. That's true. Fielding bunts. Driven toward left center. Rajay Davis. A couple steps in front of the wall has it. So one out here in the top of the ninth. Batting seven, the center fielder, Tyler Collins. So here's Tyler Collins. The Yankees have won eight out of ten, and the Yankees are now 19 and nine, cool. and that's the best record in the American League. Indians beat the Royals three to one. Jump over the Twins to get back into first place in the Central because the Red Sox beat the Twins 11 to 1. The Orioles beat the White Sox 6 5. Dylan Bundy got another win. Finally fulfilling all that promise. Remember, he was a very high yep, draft pick, exactly. and then he had some arm problems. I believe he had Tommy John surgery. The Orioles. Pitching him out of the bullpen a little bit last year and then started him some and well, he's been terrific. And Collins is retired so two away here in the top of the ninth inning. Batting eight right fielder. So that's Jim. Look at the Aducey. American League scoreboard. You're right about Bundy at seeing him out of the bullpen with the Orioles and that's what happens just like with Frankie Montas. He had an injury more of a collarbone type injury. And Limited inning, so they can bring him out of the bullpen, throwing very hard. And they see him in the rotation sometime in the near future. One of the acquisitions, along with Jarrell Cotton from the Dodgers, a couple of in the big leagues, another young man who's the minor league level, but good trade for the A's with Rich Hill and Reddick going to Los Angeles. Grant Holmes, thank you to learn. Holmes that Grant Holmes. Yeah, we showed you earlier pitching in double A. He's still a young man, Grant. Uh -huh. yeah. Maybe even young for the level he's at, which right. is double A. God, that guy next to him is Marcus Simeon. Remember him? Good to see him. Yeah. Cast off and we missed that guy. Yes, we do. Good man. He said, I can't shake your hand for a while. Because yeah. <laughs> it's the right hand that he had surgery. And so he is here spending time at the yard doing a lot of rehab while the team's on the road. And nice to see him sitting in the dugout. Some guys, when they come to the park with Brian Schulman and spend all the time in the rehab, they get dressed and they go. Just you know, just stick around. take off. Just stick around and cheer for the team. It's got a, it's, that's kind of a soft cap cast just to get them mobilized, but he got the real cast off doing some treatment. Do see with a good swing, 101 miles an hour from Montas. <laughs> 101. <laughs> An easy 101. It sounds fast, isn't that what they yeah, say? Yeah, it's a, it's a radio ball. You can hear it. <laughs> How about a slider? The old radio ball. Yeah. They say sounded like a strike. <laughs> Under Alonzo is going to lead things off in the bottom of the ninth inning. It'll be Alonzo, Healy, and Maxwell. And they will face K Rod. Well, it's always, I mean, he's been a terrific closer for a long time, but he's been known to make it interesting. Deception is his key. That's deception. Good fastball at 101. And it's such an easy fastball too. That's the amazing thing. And 
People want to see him. He being Frankie Montas in rotation, but man, you come out of the pin, he gets consistent with that 95 plus fastball. Ducci giving him a good battle. 101 again. with pretty darn good at bat against a guy who's hitting triple digits. So an 11 Got pitch at bat for Ducey and he gets Jose the walk. Iglesias. Well, those make a hitter feel good. So for the A's pitchers they've struck out a lot tonight 13 they've also walked a lot that's six walks. Four of those were by the starter Jesse Hahn. Good pitch there, 98, right on the corner to Glacius, who's two for four with two singles and two runs scored. So, a little production from the bottom of the lineup where they're getting on base, and then the lineup rolls over. And Romine and Castellanos have both done damage in. Those are the one and two yeah. hitters. So that's that turning over the lineup thing, Ray, which we talked about right. earlier. Exactly. Nice thing, though, for the A's. This will 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. The Tigers have left on base. So, like you said earlier, what it could have been for the Tigers had they come through with the big hits and tried to avoid that from happening. And maybe have a Baker's dozen with this one left on base. Brad Osmus, their manager. There's some talk about. Maybe with the new general manager, he would not be retained, but uh, Avila said yes, he would be. So, a good job. Not a bad throw it over because with two outs, the Tigers may try to get a runner in score position. The do seat runs well. Will pop up. Alonzo cannot quite get there. So flips it to the youngster who is psyched. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> he waited for three hours and ten minutes. And he just oh, wiped, look at that face. wiped his so mother's so kiss off yeah. his cheek. This guy's this guy's yeah. like, yeah. I got mine a long time ago. And I sent it on all my buddies. <laughs> Good breaking ball. Iglesias swings and misses. Maxwell tags him, and we are going to the bottom of the ninth, folks. I'd like to see a little Holy Toledo. Tigers <laughs> five, A's four. That's the good Hayrod idea. Coming in.
So here we go, folks. Bottom of the ninth inning. And Yonder Alonso to lead it off. Tigers leading five to four. Their closer is on, and he's well known, Francisco Rodriguez. This is his 15th year in the big leagues. He's 35 years old, and he is still pretty good. It's all about deception for him, and he throws a lot of arms and legs and body. Fastball, really low 90s, but his curveball is change up, and he throws. Watch this. Yeah. And there's your fastball, and that's going to be it, about 90. That's it. But he change up, curveballs, and you're right. One and two, seven for nine save opportunities. 62, the major league record. One season with the Angels. Went on the Mets. Excuse me, yeah. his second year here in Detroit. But you just really have to watch and not swing at his motion. So 90 miles an hour, and he's not going to go above That's that it. a whole That'd lot. The top. But, but just, it, yeah, this is the yeah, deal right here. Yeah, high leg kick, drops the legs and arm way out, then here comes the other arm. And so if you just pay attention to the baseball, you have a chance. And he can pull the string with the best of them and spin on his catcher, Alvino the box. So Owen to Alonzo, Healy to follow, then Maxwell. Up the first baseline foul. In his career, Francisco Rodriguez has 437 saves. So he is 13 away from 450. Only three closers have over 450 Rivera, Hoffman, Lee Smith. That's it. Hoffman's going to the Hall of Fame just like Mariano for some reason. Lee Smith, they don't even think about him. Yeah, how can you not think I know, about Lee Smith? 178. Maybe he walked too slow to the mound or something. <laughs> <laughs> but he could pitch. Big old Lee. And there it is, yeah. the off speed pitch. It just kind of falls off the table. And it comes out of his hand like his fastball, and that's what makes it the, the difference. But, you know, he needs base hit. But you're right, Ryan. Kyle, ever since that, it's been Healy. nothing for the A's out of the bullpen. Of the Tigers coming in and makes it a match, and Osmus has done it. And there's your change up at 85, and it just floats away. So an 0-2 curveball that he fouled. So one out, and here's Healy. So it would be kind of a general theory, Ray, but I think with closers, most closers are have that one dominant pitch. Right. I just feel like the first two pitches of an at bat against a closer are important because they don't want to fall behind 2 0. Yeah. And that's why through the fastball is Alonzo, and that's the second fastball. They actually change up, sorry. But they look so similar, and that's why. 90 to 85 is not that much, but it's but it's the de the deception pitch coming back almost like a screwball, barely catching the corner if it did. Healy has homer, flied out to center and single. His homer was a solo shot in the second inning, his fifth of the year. Just off the plate, 90 miles an hour. Maxwell, who is waiting. I think that Francisco Rodriguez, the veteran Alonzo, but you got Healy and Maxwell to follow that couple of youngsters, and they just have to be patient. This is the time you talk to your hitting coach a lot. Line shot, Upton back, and Upton's there, and he's got it. Healy can't believe it. That ball was smoked. Batting in the sixth position. The catcher. Yeah, but he Number had 13. the top spin, and unfortunately, Ooh. instead of getting up and going Maxwell. over the head, stayed back perfectly on the curveball. Change up, soft, crushed. Top spin is up and just backed up and got it. Playing deep anyway. When you play that deep near the near the warning track, able to catch it easily. So that is frustrating if you're a hitter. Here's Maxwell, final hope for the A's. And there's the 
the off speed pitch drops in there first try. Now make sure you stay tuned after the game. A's post game live. It's presented by State Farm. So that'll be coming up. The conclusion of this ball game. Hopefully it's not over for a while. Maxwell's got to get aboard. Strike on the outside corner. Rodriguez painted the corner in its own two. Well, that's perfectly thrown, and while he may not have the same velocity he had years back, his control is impeccable. So 0 and 2. In the dirt. When Rodriguez came up, remember he first burst onto the scene in the 2002 World Series. That's right. I mean, he was throwing about 95, 96 miles an hour with that kind of funky delivery and that great changeup. And he came up in September, wasn't even on the roster for the first five months. Yeah, he came up, and yeah. because of the somebody got hurt, somebody I think. got yeah. hurt, and is able to put him on, and he's been here ever since, and set the record in Anaheim. 62 saves in a year, fastest past Bobby Thigpen. Avila sets up outside, one-two pitch. Take by Maxwell two and two. It's almost like somebody told him, Bruce, you get two strikes, he's gonna go soft, he's gonna don't get too anxious. Under Alonzo has done his part tonight with a couple of home runs. Is a pitcher shaking to get the pitch that he wants. So Stephen Vogt emphatically put down the curveball. Jesse Hahn, but looks like Francisco Rodriguez is going to throw what he wants to throw. Change up. He keeps calling the change up. He's finally going to throw it. And it floats outside. So now it's gone from 0 2 to 3 2. Dugout is into it, watching intently. And just got a piece of it. Mila says, "Give me a new baseball." It's a change up. And there it is. There's right off the end of the bat. Oh, Everest. Wow. That bat was a quarter of an inch shorter than strike three. You can't, you can't hit it any no, less. No. And if it was a cuffed bat, it would have it, uh, it would have shattered it. So I see a one for a fastball. Yep. Came back over the plate a little bit, and Maxwell ended up having a pretty good pitch to hit. Uh, he was protecting the, the off speed, and that's what happens, though. And you're thinking fastball, you're hoping fastball, but you're also thinking change up and curveball, and as a result, you're going to be late. Plus, Bruce Maxwell hits a lot to left field anyway. That's primarily where he hits pitches there, playing him straight up. At least it's a little bit towards the middle. Outfield deep for Maxwell. 3 2 pitch. She walked it. So the A's are still alive here in the bottom of the ninth. And unfortunately, Maxwell came in in the seventh inning, pinch hit, actually right, pinned her in the sixth inning, so there's nobody to pinch right for her. The only extra player the A's still have is Trevor Plouffe. Right. And boom, 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 boom. And great at bat. Got, got behind 0 and 2, but then everything's soft. And actually, Bruce Maxwell, for someone who's probably had no at bats against this closer, who may go to the Hall of Fame, that was a great at bat by Bruce. Outfield of the Tigers is there somewhere. I mean, that's. In the shadows. No, no, double, no doubles. So Matt Joyce steps in. Just hit a home run and walk it off. That'd be the best thing. Joyce. 
Took a big rip but the changeup at 84 miles an hour. Comes up empty on that first swing 0 1. Joyce has hit a fly ball to right. Has lined out to first and hit a fly ball to center field. So he's 0 for 3 tonight. Maxwell short lead at first. Castellanos the third baseman in even with the bag. Line drive. Right field. Aducey's going to play it out of half. Maxwell headed for third. Maxwell will stop there. Joyce in the second with a double second and third two outs. Now a base hit could win it for the A's. Well great at bat by Joyce off speed ball tailed back towards the middle. And a could not get to it. And on the run was Maxwell on the two strike or two out hit. The cut I distinctly remember. Bruce Maxwell running as hard don't look it's going to drop look at your coach. The A's liked it, but I remember when Francisco Rodriguez was pitching to Scott Hedberg in Anaheim, runner at third. He did not throw a breaking ball for fear of bouncing the ball. Right now, to see if he goes straight for the fastball or maybe a changeup, but the curveball that he likes to throw, it's up to Alex Avila to block it. Adam Rosales is the hitter. First pitch, line drive, base hit left field. One run scores. Here comes the winning run, and it is over at the Coliseum. <laughs> Fastball. Toledo moment. That's a whole bunch of them tonight. Three home runs and they walk off. And Bob Melvin bobblehead. Thankfully, the skipper's happy. So the A's finally in the ninth inning get that big hit they were looking for. Well, but there's a fastball kite right down the middle. And well, I don't know, but just that stands out so vividly about. The Hatterberg base hit to left field because he would not throw the curveball. I don't know if that was in his mind, but Adam Rosales hard hit up and throw close, but not enough time for the head first slide by Matt Joyce. Adam Rosales, wow, what a big hit. Get in the run of the third. Matt Joyce hit first slide, hand on the plate. Great effort by Avila, but man, you get to go in contact, especially. You know you're going to be sent. Chip Hill's going to send him. And with contact, Matt Joyce. What a good hit. Great hit. Throw up the line a little bit. Avila had to go back. And that's the difference if the throw a bit closer to the plate. He's out. And the pitch. <laughs> How about this? Go. Oh, they're just waiting, waiting, hoping. And now hold it, Toledo, the first walk off. So Adam Rosales is standing by downstairs. He is the hero, Rosie. Congratulations. So, hey, if you're only going to get one hit in the game, make it the game winner, right? That's right. Hey, this is great stuff. Bob Melvin, bobblehead, and you get the guy the win. But uh, you went right after the first pitch. What are you thinking as you step into the box in that situation? I'm thinking he's coming right at me. You know, I got to be ready to hit. I'm an aggressive hitter, so he gave me a good pitch to hit. Found a hole. Joyce he scored. Joyce is clear. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Hey, you guys still there? <laughs> oh, we're here. We're just watching what? you, buddy. You look great. <laughs> You know, Rosie, we were just talking when Francisco Rodriguez with his great curveball and your hitting coach, Darren Bush, talked about deception. You said first pitch fastball, these figures going to come at you. How much were aware of his history of things that he has done in situations like that, especially with the run at third base? Yeah, I mean, he's a great pitcher, you know. 
Definitely do. He's uh, but I, I just try to stay within my game, and our team just stayed together. You know, we kept on fighting, kept on fighting. So it's awesome to be a part of. And Rosie, guys have been struggling, but are you a believer that a uh, win like this can? I don't know, get things going a little bit. I, I know each day has its own uh, different outcome, but are you a believer in momentum carrying over to the next day? I mean, no question. I mean, it's a long season, but yeah, a win like this, we're excited to show up at the ballpark tomorrow. How happy are you? And I know you think Marcus Simeon, unfortunately, we showed him tonight. He's on the bench watching. You know he's going to play, but how great is it for you every day to get a chance to be in the lineup and play? It is. I mean, it's a definitely a good opportunity. I mean, I'm. Hoping Marcus gets strong pretty soon, but yeah, it's, it's a good opportunity to to play every day to get those reps. You know, you get, get into the rhythm, get your timing. And every once in a while, a walk off. <laughs> that's nice that's job, right. Rosie. All right, thank you, guys. First of the year. Uh, yeah, that's great. So, so Adam Rosales with the game-winning hit. He said, "I'm not waiting around. I'm no. gonna go after the first pitch." And you know what? It was a fastball, 90 miles an hour, and it was right down the middle. Pitch cast right there, yeah. right down the middle. And and you're right. I mean, you go to the plate like that, be aggressive. And for the A's to come back the way they did, you know, the at-bat to me was Bruce Maxwell. He got behind 0-2. Yeah, Here's a young kid. He takes pitches, 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 and finally he gets on base. And Matt Joyce, that's a huge hit for Matt Joyce because he has been grinding it out. He finally comes through with a big two-out double and sets it up for, for Adam Rosales. But a, a great win for the Athletics, something to build on, and we'll see if that can hold true starting tomorrow. Indeed. So the A's get a walk-off. Holy Toledo is what we <laughs> like to right. say tonight. About four it? times tonight. Bill would have liked this that's one right. tonight. So 6-5 is your final, and it'll be the rubber game of the series tomorrow here at the Coliseum. So it took three hours and 28 minutes, 16,651 saw it, and it was a walk-off victory for the Athletics. Final score, A's 6. Tigers 5. You've been watching A's Baseball at NBC Sports California. Don't go away. A's Post Game Live presented by State Farm starts right now. Nice job, Rosie. <laughs>